Hey, this is Chris Jericho, and you're listening to the Shout It Out Loud cast. They're going to give you a reason to live, make you feel like you're the king of the mountain. And when it's all said and done, they're going to dance all over your face. Oh, yeah! We got some good-looking girls! Oh, yeah! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Shout It Out Loudcast. Don't turn your radio dial or swipe left. I guess we don't have radio dials anymore. You're in the right place because the album review crew is back with episode 19. We are calling this one, we ain't talking about sharks, the mighty 80s band Shark Island, or Kiss playing for a bunch of sharks. We are talking the mighty, great, white Tommy and Zeus. How are ya? Oh, what a great intro. Thank you, my friend. Great white once bitten. Oh, yeah. Yes. And this is my pick. Let's get going, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank yeah. you. I'll That's it. I've, I've got this ready just in case. And, and you're such a you're so full of <laughs> shit. Oh, wait. I'm wait. holding up the shit emoji. <laughs> wait, before we continue, let's not forget. What do we always forget every episode? Thanking oh, our good friend. Tony. That reminded you of Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I hold up the shit emoji and he goes, wait a second. I'm not reminded. Sonny <laughs> holds up the poop emoji and it reminded me to think and thank Tony for the intro music. <laughs> <laughs> yes. awesome. Sorry, Tony. We love you, buddy. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. <laughs> Although that was bad timing. <laughs> Zeus, what's up, buddy? Oh, am I here? <laughs> yeah, you're here too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, uh, I, I don't want to recognize Tony unless I see one ounce of effort for him to come on the kiss cruise with us. Oh boy. Say it, Sonny. Boy lacks ambition. (laughs) So in other words, we're never going to be mentioning him again. (laughs) Poor Tony. (laughs) Poor Tony. (laughs) I'm feeling, I'm feeling bad for Tony. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Oh man. Oh, it's going right. to be good. Good times here. Good times. Yep. Talking yep. great white. Yep. And this is your pick, Tom. And I love it. Yep. I think this one might be surprising people. Uh, we don't, we try not to get into too much details. Sonny always likes to do those head fakes and tell us how everything sucks before we start. Um, and uh, usually they, you know, they're a mixed bag. Some he likes, some he doesn't. So we never know. What's going to happen here? Um, but before we move on, we always go back to the previous episode, and uh, we discussed a, a you know a, an up and coming band called ACDC and their Highway to Hell album. What was that like, Tom? Yeah, so Highway to Hell last month group pick. So we always go back to that and talk about the poll. So the Twitter poll uh, best song. Not too many surprises here. It was a little bit closer than I thought. So the fourth. Twitter options were Highway to Hell, Shot Down in Flames, If You Want Blood, and Touch Too Much. And of course, Highway to Hell won 37%, but then it got a little closer with Touch Too Much and If You Want Blood were tied, uh, almost tied 26, 24%. And then I can't believe it. Shot Down in Flames comes in dead last with a, a, a minuscule 13%. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's Highway to Hell. A lot of people love this album, so not too many controversial picks. Um, our buddy Todd Harrig said, I kept waiting for Sonny Pooney to flap his trap to the point that I was going to have to come and get him, especially with his foreshadowing, which never really materialized. Hmm. That said, Shot Down in Flames is not only my favorite from this album, but also my favorite ACDC song. Rich, Rich Uncle Polly said, I had to vote if you want blood, but my favorite song on this album is Walk All Over You. It's my favorite because I'm such a jerk. Again, great episode. Always a great listen. Thanks, gents. Oh, boy. Our buddy Zandon Black does hashtag in the minority. ACDC are a dumpster fire. Woo. Wow. Okay. Wow. So he is the first person I think I've ever heard say they don't like ACDC. That's well, not even the, not not even not like music. not even not like them. Call them a dumpster fire. Woof. And then my favorite Twitter handle Fritz Von Bufu is back. Possibly the toughest poll you've ever put up. Blood 
etches, edges out touch for me. So much love for this episode and the review crew shows in general. Gets my mind off of the bullshit for at least a few hours before I inevitably go back to being a piece of shit online troll. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we go the first of many our buddy md and now i want a hungry man dinner you bastards john gross i love the whole record it's in my top five all time touch too much is great any unlike anything acdc does they hit it out of the park with this one lyrically it's just fun face of an angel smiling with sin a body like venus with arms yeah, that's a great line our buddy steve has to be highway to hell for me classic song does not suffer from fatigue factor Steve DeDisco, Highway to Hell, much like Sabbath's Paranoid. I've listened to it a million times, but I never skip it. Kevin's on fire if you want blood. That's battle cry shit right there. Uh, Richie Rich, this was interesting. He says his favorite song was Beating Around the Bush. <laughs> wow, that's interesting to me because that's just like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, our buddy Darren, Night Prowler. Ooh, see, I, I actually didn't mind that. Um, DG from Tennessee shot down in flames from here, but girls got rhythm is my favorite. Yeah, that's a, that's a standout. And of course we know Twitter only allows four options. Polly, the log back in black will always be my number one, but highway to hell is one. A the common thread is obviously Mutt Lang guys, a magician responsible for my favorite ACDC album, along with my personal favorites from Def Leppard foreigner and the cars. Um, Ariel SN. I like shot down in flames. It has the best rhythm from that album. And there is an early version from touch too much, which sounds fantastic. Yeah, a lot of people loving that. And then we'll, we'll just get into some quick episode specific comments here. Um, deuce. He says, I'm on an Island here. I don't care. This album ranks last on my list. Overhyped overplayed. In my opinion, Bon Scott can arm wrestle Ozzy for the worst rock singer. Angus is overrated. Now, see, this makes perfect sense coming from Deuce because he absolutely thinks the Ace Frehley 78 solo album is fantastic. So the guy is clearly in need of a hearing aid because he has his music takes are just a disaster. And we're talking about Ace Frehley 78 because that just dropped today or Saturday, the 27th. Can I, can I add something there, though? Absolutely. Of course. Um, I actually like when something somebody has a contrary point of view. Oh, I do, while, too. If they back it up. Like, <laughs> but Aussie and ACDC sock. Like, I know. what the that, that's, fuck, dude? Yeah, that's that's that, that's that's just. Yeah, I'll ahead, tell so you, he, there's one part of that I actually agree with. And what's that part? Angus is overrated. <laughs> well, you know why? It's easy to say he's overrated because it's it's three chords. It doesn't seem. Yeah. But his yeah. but his solos. It, I know. I understand what you're saying. I'm not going to fight you on that because I, I, I got you. I, I, I mean, I also, he wrote some iconic stuff, no doubt he, about yeah. that. But honestly, he's overrated. I, I, but I think. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to add. You can't tell who comes up with those fucking incredible riffs. Is it him or is his brother? That's the other part nice. to this. You know, the solos are fun, quick solos. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know who comes up with those incredible riffs. It could be Malcolm, right? Or they could be right. sharing them. And then Murph comes in with one of the greats. It's a picture of Arnold for, or Al, whatever the fuck his name is from happy days. He used to, <laughs> he used to, he used to be the encore frozen entree commercial guy. He says, stop the album review and start the frozen entree review. And he's got a picture of him holding up three two pound family size frozen entrees. One of them is, what the hell is it? Masta choli and meat sauce, gravy, <laughs> and then lasagna. Oh, Jesus Christ. Brutal. Fat man on guitar. Great album. Excellent episode. But I'd, but Sonny Pooney tries to entice Mrs. Pooney with those lyrics. It'll be a gloriously sunny outside because there ain't going to be any sunny inside. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy Steve, again, he says, I'm a replacement guy. I like Bruce Dickinson over Paul Diano, Sammy over David Lee Roth, and Johnson over Bon Scott. I was lucky I have an older brother who got me into rock and metal, and I remember hearing this when it was released. Fucking love ACDC. Such an amazing live band. Great album. Tommy uh, over Ace. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was there with him. All three of those, I was there with him until yeah. I started listening to more Bon Scott ACDC, and yep. now I enjoy Bon more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, buddy Nige, Tom, we love you, but we are all very worried about you. Please tell me on what planet Highway to Hell is a weaker album than the singles soundtrack. 
I am shocked to the core. Okay. So I responded with, you're the one using the word weaker. I say it every episode. It's impossible to rank these albums. Singles is a more important album to me personally, as is grunge music and that entire era. And then I said, I probably listen to Highway to Hell more. I, I would when we do these rankings, there's I don't I never use the word weak. It, it's getting impossible. And when we get to the rankings on this one, that will also apply as well. Nige had a couple other comments in here. Uh, we made a couple jokes about tough the band, tough rocks Honduras. <laughs> wow. Well, we made the Honduras joke. Is correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that one of the ports that the Kiss Cruise is going on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I remember when I was in grade school growing up, Honduras was the place that you like send donations to. Now we're going <laughs> well, on vacation. Now we're going on vacation there. There's a lot of places you send donations to. People go on vacation. I don't know. I've never sent a donation to Disney World or Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Not yeah. everywhere you go. I you haven't been to the Caribbean, have you? Dude, no, I, the, no. The places where the tourists go are so secluded. Oh, no, I know. Cut that. off. Yeah. yeah. You you only go by on a bus and oh, you no, see I've, how the other half lives. I've it's heard like, that. My friend. Holy shit. I've heard that. My friend, my friends who go to Jamaica, they're like, yeah, yeah. don't leave the resort or they'll end up finding your body oh. floating in the Atlantic yeah. Ocean. Don't get in a cab in Jamaica. That's <laughs> exactly. a bad idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> I used to have a uh, a person I know that worked uh, at a certain place. He was from El Salvador. He's like, you have a nice watch. You wouldn't last two seconds in, in El Salvador with that. And I say, why? They, they'd rob me? And he goes, no, they'd just take a knife and just cut your hand just off. Cut, <laughs> cut your arm off. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk off. And I'm like, okay, I'll see you over there. So what we're saying is get ready for the Honduras Kiss Cruise <laughs> stories. <laughs> All right, let's move back to ACDC. So Herman had a good one here. ACDC were amazing in the 80s when Kiss were not. It was embarrassing to be a Kiss fan from 1984 to 1991. Highway to Hell and Back in Black are sister albums with different singers. Can't listen to the whole album without skipping. Oh, and by the way, Steve corrects. Well, he didn't correct us. He was helping us. He says Pratt is an English word. It means stupid person. Because I think Angus was talking, or there were a couple quotes where they were using the word Pratt. So there is some uh, some Twitter feedback zeus what do we got next oh we're we're hopping over to uh facebook and all right on facebook um i'm gonna skip jay's comment i'm gonna go back to it afterwards but uh kevin jepson oh my god the hungry man conversation and he has laughing emojis anyway acdc has always been mac to me what Oof. i'm wow. so lucky to have great radio stations in my area Modern rock and classic rock, but they play ACDC up to 12 times a day, and it's the same shit. All the popular ones. I'm also fortunate that you have great radio and should stop taking it for granted. Rock radio is constantly disappearing. That being said, I love ACDC's deep cuts. I do like this record besides the fatigue of hearing all these songs. My all-time favorite song in this catalog is Touch Too Much. So good. Uh, yep. Number two, beat him around the bush. I don't get Three. that song, man. Yeah, walk all over you. A lot of fun, guys. Maybe your next one could be four hours. Hey, you never know. Who We're getting there. I'll tell. I'll tell you right now, just real quick. These things are not scheduled. If it lasts two hours, great. If it lasts four hours, we have we have literally no idea what, what what's going to happen with these. So, but Graham Richley, awesome choice. Great review, guys, of a stonking blues boogie hard rock album. So many great songs although shot down in flames is my personal favorite was laughing out loud at the hungry man section <laughs> hilarious <laughs> adam nick Meyer, if this doesn't get put at the top of your list you should all lose podcasting privileges for a month oh. great album wow that's a little harsh sean hammond great show hearing three fans talk about acdc is great the band is most likely the most popular band on the planet and are really dis- dissected. Nice. Steve McNair. Steve McNair. Yeah. I loved him. Wow. God rest his Steve soul. McNair. That's amazing. Back from the dead. I love that guy. The one. Yeah. Um, Sean McNair. Sweet. Uh, Mark Reed. Love this album. Sam Pettigo. ACD ended for me. With Bond on this album. Mm. Raymond Gallus, huge Bond Scott fan. Can't wait to give this a listen. Thanks, boys. Uh, Jay McIntyre, uh, like Bond Scott a lot. Now, over on our Loud Casters page, uh, before I listen, will Sonny make me want to throw things? 
from Jay. <laughs> and then he had put on the Facebook page an hour and 46 minutes. He just put that in, referring to when Sonny would piss him off. Oh, that's the over under for each episode, or I don't know. I'm still shaking my head over his comments about fools by Van Halen. Um, get over it, Jay. Get oh, it. yeah, it sucks. And then Tony just jumps in and said to Jay, Isn't that just a given at this point? <laughs> ah, Tony, we'll see. A shot. Uh, Gary Cap, I'm with Jay Scott. Sonny better not trash this album. <laughs> 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 to me, this is perfect ACDC album, at least in the Bon Scott era. And then Jack, but now listen later today at work, but I'll put money down on it that Sonny makes a comment <laughs> on the one two drum beat in every song. And he oh, wow. I don't wow. know if I'm doing it. People are uh, people have been people have PTSD with Sonny's bad music takes. <laughs> they think they're afraid of his ACDC dumping. And you didn't you didn't. You like the album. I'm just keeping it real. Can't handle <laughs> real. That's how it is. Oh boy. Ma- Max Lynch, no pussyfooting here, a real heavy hitter. Scott Donaldson, can't wait, guys. Love this album. Highway to Hell has my favorite guitar intro of all time. Mm -hmm. Sean Hammond over here, great episode. So perfectly described as a band that was just ready to break it. Interesting, fun to ponder. What if? Uh, Mario Schlegel, best ACDC album ever. Um, Then somebody fucking named... Michelle Mariana, Michelle Mariana started like spamming us. That's and all they wrote, write that ASEC or something. Yeah. yeah. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Somebody actually asked them because every time they go into a Facebook group, that's what they comment and nobody can figure out what it means or if it stands for something. I have no idea what it, what it is. Illuminati, Tom. Uh, it uh, is. <laughs> Scott Donaldson. Great episode, guys. I had a three hour trip today. ACDC was my favorite band outside of Kiss. My top three songs on this album would have been Highway to Hell, Touch Too Much, Girls Got Rhythm. Yep. And then he also put, fun fact, growing up with Kiss and ACDC in the 80s, we had a friend that was an ACDC diehard. We all had different faves and always got into arguments about who's better. He would always finish his argument with the comment, no one can fuck with Akka. I don't who's get a- it. What's Akka? Does he mean ACDC? A- Does he mean it says, ACDC? No, it's capital A-C-C-A. I don't know. Maybe that's a misspelling. Maybe he dropped the D and put an extra C in there for ACCCA. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have the same arguments about Kiss, and all of our arguments end with, fuck you. That's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. It's oh. not fucking Nitro. That's <laughs> the end or Righty will do the hand on the face motion. The hand on the face bit yeah, that, thing. That's yep. his go to. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Raymond Gallus, great episode, boys. Love the Bon Scott era. ACDC, you really enjoy it. Thanks again. Uh, Matt Wallace, this is the first compact disc I bought when I got my first CD player as a young lad. Legendary album. I remember standing in Ames holding two CDs in my hand and pondering which one I should get. The first one was Highway to Hell, and the second was Vanilla Ice. A hot bitch walked up to me and said, I should get Vanilla Ice album and wink and winked her Bridget Fonda eyes. At me. <laughs> I immediately felt my pecker getting harder. Oh, Jesus Christ. I told her I liked her pooper and camel, <laughs> camel toe, but to go fuck off. It's even a, even a Bridget Fonda look like couldn't keep me from picking highway to hell. I later watched Point of No Return and made a hand make <laughs> handmade milkshake for the win. Oh, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ. Nice pick pickle washers. Is that who wrote that? Matt Wallace. So Matt Wallace is another Sonny Pooney burner account because that's oh, the kind of yeah. language that's the kind of language that Sonny Pooney would use. <laughs> but he was standing in Ames. Do you remember Ames? Dude, Ames was like the trashiest version of like Target. It was like a disaster zone. Oh, it was like a Kmart. Kind of? Oh, but worse. It made, it made Kmart look like a luxury department it was like store. Ann and Hope. Oh, yeah, brutal. <laughs> they, they put it this way. You know what? They, they look like big versions of like Ocean State Job Lot, which is a huge shit chain around here in New England. Oh. Ann and Hope. Zares, Zares, there I remember because there was Zares in Ohio, but oh, I don't. What, an, another one, Caldor. Yeah, <laughs> and that guy I told you about him, Fadi. Fadi. My name is Fadi. I'm Fadi. from here. 
<laughs> sure you are. Um, he so are we going to go to the Caldors? <laughs> what the fuck is the Caldors? God, my name is Fadi. I am from here. <laughs> I am Bill. I am from here. Um, Mark Stewart. I love the Bond Scott years way better. And then Jack again, Pinocchio says, I swear any kid in Australia born after 1969 was given this album from birth. It's one of those almost perfect Aussie pub rock albums that you can whack on a barbecue, long drives, anything. It's hard and fast, but can easily listen to. On a side note, a friend of mine actually walked down the aisle to Highway to Hell. Ooh. Good God! Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm <laughs> sure his w- wife's family loved it. <laughs> nice. oh, shit, that's kind of like interesting. It. Yikes! Yeah. Oof. Now, okay. over on YouTube. Yeah. Oh my voice, Tom. YouTube. It's getting there. Screaming at the fucking Bruins game. The Bruins, man. man. The Bruins. They ruin oh. us. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Mark Stewart. Another cool thing about Bon Scott is the fact that he had tattoos all over his arms in the 70s before tats yeah. became popular in the it's 80s. True. It's true. I would say tats became popular in the 90s, really. Yeah. Um, and then he added, I never hated ACDC with Brian Johnson, but I lost interest when Back in Black came out. Never got over the ACDC without Bon Scott. Bon Scott, to me, is the ultimate ACD singer, Highway to Hell. Big Balls, Live Wire, Night Prowler, Dirty Deeds, Jailbreak. I can go on. Long live Bon Scott. John, be good. What video are you talking about? ACDC never made a promo for Night Prowler. At least I can't find it. I don't they know did. who's refor- referring to, but is he referring to us? Yeah, they, there's, a, there's a promo video for that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. There's a promo uh, video for Night Prowler. If, if he's having a hard time, find it. Go watch that ACDC documentary that we sent up. We talked about on Amazon Prime, the one about the making of Highway to Hell. They show clips of it there. Yeah. I thought he was referring to a, a comment above him, but uh, that's what Oh, I'm okay. Okay. Um, Mike and Maureen, ACDC equals Chuck Berry on steroids. Ooh, that's uh, an interesting analogy. Okay. Other cool thing. Oh, uh, MLT, MTL Voots. That's our buddy. Be- yep. Before hearing this album on rock radio, Chom FM, C H O M F M, as a 10 year old, my ears have been primed with a daily assault of a whole lot of Rosie, Sin City, Long Way to the Top, TNT, and the unforgettable Jailbreak riff, which seemed like it must have been played on loop at, at, the, at the time. Yep. Only stop when mom would get home from work at 5 30. 1981 Black and Black was released, and everyone else and his brother became an ACDC fan. Enjoyed those albums, but realized that this episode, that when to listen to some ACDC will naturally go back to the Bond Scott era for the music. And Johnson for the intro to Hell's Bells, Back and Black, and even the massively overplayed in Arena's Thunderstruck. Thanks, guys. Great choice. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And then Pinworm. Oh, boy. He's back. I love a whole lot of Rosie. I'm going to say it's my favorite song along with If You Want Blood. I would go as far as saying they are the stairway to heaven, in my opinion. All right. All right. I don't know about that, but I don't know if I, I don't know if ACDC ever had anything close to stairway to heaven, but I, I get his point. I get his point. So, all right. We got a couple quick emails here. Uh, we got one from Doug Middleton. Hey, fellas. First of all, outstanding job on the Highway to Hell review. Awesome album. But how did the conversation of 69 cent pot pies not come up during the TV dinner conversation? Those were amazing. Have you ever had one? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Yes, that I way. have many. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I, I am the size. I yeah. am. <laughs> David Clark. Hey, SIOL team. Great review of Highway to Hell. Like many people our age, I got into ACDC initially during the Brian Johnson years and discovered the Bond Scott catalog after. I have found, though, that to me, Bon Scott stuff has stuck with me much more than the Brian Johnson-led albums. That entire catalog is still on regular rotation for me. By the way, I was rolling, laughing, listening to your description of the Bon Scott jorts. Classic. (laughs) I included a pic of Bon here. What is going on with these jeans? And he includes a pic of skin-tight, painful Bon Scott jeans where the crotch is literally ripped open. (laughs) 
<laughs> like it looks like he stole these jeans and tried to squeeze into them. It's like half of his balls are hanging out of them. Anyway, keep on doing what you're doing. It's the best podcast out there. Best David C. Indiana S I O L fan. And thank you, David. Great stuff. And Sonny, you have something uh, on a personal level you wanted to share with us. <sighs> yeah. Uh, uh oh. You know, you you guys may have some friends that are, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, depends. You know, you, you get friends that move on into other parts of the world. So I'm going to keep her identity protected here because I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to put her out there like that. But here's what the text said. Uh, Hi, Sonny. Long time. No text. Just listen to the Highway to Hell episode. I didn't even know she was listening. Wow. And I'm worried about you. I've always thought you needed serious therapy, but now after hearing your thoughts around Night Prowler, I'm thinking you need therapy now more than ever. <laughs> Call me. I have sessions available next week. <laughs> I'm like, All righty then. But wait, uh, hold on here. Now, I, I recall that you saying you didn't like the song, but were you like cheering on the lyrics? Like what? What? No, oh, I think it was about. Just the lyrics freaked me out a little bit. And the oh, yes, cut, yes. Oh, you couldn't. Of, yeah, yeah, you said you yeah. couldn't listen to the song because it like yeah, scared yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, scary. I thought you were like talking about that. You could see yourself as being the prowler <laughs> going through <laughs> women's windows at like two in the morning. Well, we'll find out. Seen, because I can't fit through a window. <laughs> we'll find out because on that kiss cruise, I might be sleeping with one eye open if Poonie's in the same room as us. Holy shit. Oh, I'd be like, Mr. Marbles, Mr. Marbles. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, we're on that cruise, and BC, after a night of drinking, everybody's trying to go to sleep, and BC goes, hey, Pony, yeah, you doing all right down there? I'm like, BC, you stay exactly where you are, baby. I'm doing just fine. Oh, God almighty. (laughs) All right. Oh, (laughs) exactly. There's going to be a lot of that. Well, let's transition over to the episode we chose, and this is Tom's pick. So why don't you tell us why you picked it and everything else? Okay. So Great White Once Bitten. Um, So the album comes out in the summer of 87, just before my 14th birthday. Um, And I just remember the first time I heard Rock Me on radio in Boston, because I think we may have mentioned it before, but the Boston area had some amazing rock stations back then. Most of them are gone. There's one left. Um, but I was obsessed with FM rock radio. Uh, and of course MTV was, was hitting its stride at that time too. And I just remember hearing rock me and I loved the, the way it sounded. It was different. It had like a blues base to it. And we'll get into that when we start really dissecting the album. It had a, a blues base to it. Um, Jack's voice was different. The band was different. They, you know, they weren't, they weren't sleazy like rat. They weren't heavy like Motley. They weren't awful like poison. <laughs> yep, there's your there's our there's our monthly poison da- dig. <laughs> um, they just they they just they sounded different. They brought a different sound, and that's primarily Jack's vocals. But even even the songwriting lyrically, it was just a, it was a different album. Yes, it had the pop metal, you know, uh, things that we loved about that era. Uh, but rock me, and then save your love. Just two songs that hooked me in, just because they were they were different. And of course, both of those two songs are very long, which was also very unusual for that era. Cause most of those things were three, four minute pop rock hits that came out. Um, just an album that grabbed me with those two songs and then just digging into the entire album itself, just a top to bottom album uh, of all the albums that we have reviewed. I don't necessarily have a ton of nostalgia with this other than, you know, I remember getting it, but one of the best albums top to bottom that we have done on this entire thing for me, there are no skippers here. Um, and we'll, we'll get into the more details on that, but that's my history with this, an album that I've always loved. And I, I was excited to pick it. I'll right, see you guys next week. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go do Tom? Do you, I um, mean, Tom, do you want to go again? <laughs> I'll go again. I'll take over. <laughs> All right. Sonny, go ahead, Sonny. So it's 1987. I'm, you know, three, four years really into my musical journey. As I've said, I'm a straight up, you know, MTV kid. So this was a MTV band for me. Rock me. It felt different than everything else. It was on MTV every five minutes. <laughs> so the song definitely attracted me. I didn't get the album until after I had heard Save Your Love, though. For something about Save Your Love that kind of really attracted me to go buy the album. I remember the first time hearing the album. I'm like, wow, this like they're not doing anything special, but it's a blend of the lot of the stuff that I was listening to at the time. 
uh, go, you know, fast forward a little bit. Once bitten, twice shy is a karaoke staple for me. I used to do it all the time. I own every great white album. I would say I like 60 to 70% of everything they put out. I've seen great white in all incarnations live every single way you can possibly see great white from arenas to the corn fest <laughs> or down the street <laughs> <laughs> where, where it costs 10 bucks to get in the corn fest and you can see everything, including the band. Like I, I've seen them, um, many, many, many times. I'll also tell you that I started hearing, um, at school that, well, the guy sounds like Robert Plant. And I'm like, I don't know who the hell Robert, who the hell is Robert Plant? Right. Because when you're looking in 1987 and if your musical journey didn't start in the seventies, you really don't know who Robert Plant is in 1987. Nobody really does. Well, at least not if your musical journey started later. Okay. So great white was my entry point to Led Zeppelin. Yep. I've, That's I've when heard, I started I've, listening. I've heard a lot of people say that and I never, ne- that never really connected with me. I, I, I can see it though, but go ahead, Sonny. I just go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, I've been a great white fan. Uh, I'm not so much of the fan of today's great white, white, either version, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, it's a top 50 band for me. Uh, no doubt. And I've seen them 20 times probably live. Yeah. So cool. Great white's great. Zeus. Um, I saw it on MTV and got hooked. Uh, I saw the video. I thought they looked cool. I thought they uh, the song was great. Uh, I was a Zeppelin fan, so that's in his voice is what really attracted me in the beginning. And it turned out they were the first concert I ever saw. I went to see White Snake with my uh, brother's friends. I got had to bring his freshman brother with him. He was all pissed off. <laughs> um, and White Snake with Great White opening. I think there was another band, but I can't remember who. I remember walking into the stadium and hearing face the day nice. I'm like I've never been to a concert. There was the first I've never been to a concert, but I'm like, this is insane. Wow. This is loud. But also since then, I can't remember a, a concert that I've gone to that. I'm like, dude, what is that song? I got to get that. And um, I'm like, it's not on fucking once bitten. And then I went backwards so yep. this has got to be around 87, 88, the concert was. 88, because I saw that show twice. Yeah. And um, I remember going back and getting all the discography of them, because that's what I did. I bought everything as soon as I got it. Um, I even got Recovery Live. And when I listened to Recovery Live and they got rock and roll, they got immigrant songs starting off. And he fucking nails it. Yeah. Nails it. They got the who's substitute on it. And I got in money and I don't need no doctor. And but I got the cover, and this is interesting, of recovery. The one where he's on the the, the gurney there, mm-hmm. but they have like a big saw and he and he's got like a this enormous like boner and they're about <laughs> to cut it off. <laughs> and he's got a like a look on his face, like slapped, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> And there's been like several covers. So even if you go to like, like Wikipedia and you look and they have the two different versions of that, that's not the version. This one, they look like they're going to fucking, there's one that they look like they're going to like, I don't know, like digging for oil. Another one, they've got like pipes and boilers and pipes and (laughs) pipes. uh, Yeah. Um, But I got the one with the fucking hedge clippers looking like he's going to cut his thing off. And I'm like, these guys are fucking hilarious. They're cool. They rock. And maybe my brother liked them. It's, and he's a fucking fussy like music guy. So I I've, I stuck with them. Uh, I went through the next album, the next phase. I must listen to um, Once Bitten, Twice Shy or watch that video over a million times. At least once a month, I'll go back and watch that video. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. And I know we're not talking about that album, but just the way the band is. And then, you know, comparing that to this specific album, I don't know how you can listen to this album. If you like our music, our, like if, you know, the albums we've done, there's no way you don't like this whole album. That's Mm -hmm. how I look at it. And it stuck with me. This album kicks ass. I haven't, and I'll be honest with you, Tom, I'm glad you picked it 
because it's been a little bit off my radar. It's been a little bit more twice shy for me, but oh, fucking a, yep, some killers yep. on this. And talking about Zeppelin, it's funny too because I mean, I, 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 Sonny, I know you're kind of on the fence with Zeppelin. If, if at best, I think I know Zeus and I are absolutely love Zeppelin, all time band for the two of us. You go and listen to the album that they did called Great Zeppelin, a tribute to Led Zeppelin. That is insane. And the album cover right there is amazing. It's a take on the, you know, the Hindenburg explosion, but it's like a great white shark shaped Hindenburg. There's 14 songs of all the, all the Zeppelin classics and it's, it's Jack doing it. And it's, I mean, you know, I know we don't want to spend too much time talking about Zeppelin, but since we're, we're drawing those comparisons, the fact that they pulled off a Zeppelin cover album and it's not embarrassing and it's not awful and it actually is really amazing especially if you're a zeppelin fan you know that kind of draws that comparison even even closer and i think those are the things you know we, we say this a lot whenever we talk about you know a band that falls into that hair metal category is there were so many of them at this time that a lot of them got lost in the shuffle great white stood out because they had hits you know, they had Rock Me, they had Save Your Love, they had Once Bitten off the next album. You know, they had a couple of songs that were minor hits and they had videos. But I just wish, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, when, when an album like this that I personally love, I, I, I almost get like very defensive about them being like, ah, it's just 80s hair metal. Okay, it is. But this is something that sticks out in terms of the, the, the songwriting and the, and the instrumentation and the arrangement of these songs. I mean, again, I'm not going to tell you that it's like the Beatles, but. I think this is a this is a standout album, and you know I, when we break down the tracks and get into it, it's going to be fun to do that. There's a story out there, uh, Joe Elliott. Yep, right. He brings it up in a conversation with Robert Plant. I'm assuming this is the '80s. Yep, and he says, uh, "Hey, Robert, have you ever heard the singer in Great White? He sounds a lot like you." Robert's response: "Yeah, he sounds more like me than I do." <laughs> And it's funny, you can never tell what angle Robert Plant is coming from <laughs> because he's always such a like, eh. So it's like, okay, is that a compliment or is he, yeah, are you, yeah, are you, are you tell, shitting right? on Jack Russell or what are you saying? What does that mean right there from him? You know, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure he got a chuckle out of it himself because oh, he likes course. the, yeah, he likes that shit. Yeah. Um, the one thing I want to say is for me in this era, in this music, I have like a kind of, uh, my own test to see if i really like this or if i'm eh. if i'm driving in the car and i'm blasting it yep am i singing along am i thinking i'm singing it am i thinking i'm doing the air drums or the guitar this whole album you feel like you're jack russell singing right yep, yep. or you know we uh we were talking about when we did our live cast the other uh couple of weeks back there with steve and all them we were picking those hair metal albums like I can picture me singing those rat songs or doing the Warren solos. Like if I can vision that and be like, I wish I was up there playing this and rocking out to the song. Or am I just like, yeah, this song's pretty good. Yeah. Like, that's what gets me. And so I don't care if it's not up to as critically acclaimed as some of my other favorite artists are and things like that. What moves me? And right. that shit moves me because it fucking rocks. And you can't put a, you can't explain it sometimes. But some of the songs on this album, I will point out, it's that feeling I get when you're like, fuck yeah. yeah. And it's fun. It's funny too with this album. Whenever we do, so we do these obviously once a month. And regardless of whether the, whether the album is something that we've heard a billion times, like Highway to Hell or Pyromania or Appetite or an album like this that like Zeus said he hasn't listened to it in a while. I can tell where I'm going to be coming into the episode because I was listening to this album right up until this morning when we recorded and I never got sick of it. I'm not going to say, I mean, there, there were some albums on this list that I, I would never say I've, I'm sick of them, but by the time it came time to record, I'm like, okay, I'll put that album aside. I've spent a long time with this. I don't need to hear that for a while. I'll, I'm going to listen to this as probably again, as soon as we're done. Yeah. So like, you don't want to hear ozone again. Oh fuck! Please don't don't you can't ruin listen my. Listen to this when we're done. You got to listen to my pick next. Don't uh, no. Well, well, that that'll be <laughs> that'll be to be decided. So it's funny, Tom, because I went. I was as you know, I I took Natalie to the Bruins game. Yeah, and I've been listening to this. I've been listening to Ace's solo, and I've been listening to uh, two other albums by the same band, and <clears throat> that'll be coming up at some point. Yep. Um, but it's just been. And, my, and Natalia turns to me, she goes, you've been listening to this one a lot. 
And I'm like, yeah, but it's so good. I, you yep. know, like, like I know I know this one, but I'm cheating and yes. listening to this one more. Yep. That to me is where I feel on this album. So yep. I thought you were gonna say she she asked, she goes, Dad, uh, why are you so uptight? <laughs> <laughs> no, What's but she had those, yeah, she had why, those why comments so about about the ace album playing over again, like, oh, <sighs> But why do you why do you guys listen to music that isn't good? I get <laughs> See, comments like I get comments like that. I'm like, honey, you think these ain't good because you listen to like the weekend and yeah. some fucking Ariana whatever it fucking is. But I'm like, and she's like, Yeah, but dad, come on. You know what? Like, what this isn't good. But you're bringing up a great point. We should start to maybe introduce Natalia's comment of the oh, week. Oh, it would <laughs> because, not be good. Because, because coming from a 12-year-old girl who doesn't listen to this music all the time, you're going to get nothing but bare bones honesty. Oh, you should have heard when I thought we were going to do The Elder a while back and I listened oh, oh, to this. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, my God. The comment. She was like, Dad, what is this? Is this a show? <laughs> 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 like, is this a show? I'm like, no. It's a show. <laughs> like, she thought I was like listening to like Star Trek on a fucking thing. Like. <laughs> Like, and I'm like, no, this is a, a kiss album. They try to get like all theatrical, and she's like, Dad, this is just bad. There you go. That's what <laughs> it was. It was. It was right. comments like that, and I'm yep. sure there are more. Uh, yeah, we need like those videos they show people listening to some song for the first time. Oh, the kids yeah. putting the headphones on. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. L- listen to listen to A singing. You wanted the best. You got this. It's not your place. That's terrible. Oh, terrible God. terrible oh anyway right. so once bitten as we always start these episodes we always go first to the cover yes tom tell us about the cover so the cover girl tracy martinson Ooh, yeah just straight out of the 80s um gorgeous blonde you know she's got the uh the shark tooth necklace Got some really cheesy third grade effects in the background with that, with the blue water and the little plastic fin coming out. But that that's blurry for a reason because you're meant to look at her, uh, and and we'll talk about her again because she shows up again. Um, so that there's the front cover, and then I'll make a couple brief comments about the back cover because for some reason Jack Russell is wearing a bathrobe, <laughs> and I don't know why. Uh, he's he, he's got a ring on every finger. And the other four guys, <laughs> oh, see, Zeus has the CD where it gets cut off. Yeah. Sonny and I have the vinyl. It's a full, beautiful picture of him in his cloak. It it, it looks like he's like going to like flash people. Like he looks like he, he's like a flasher. And then the other four guys, with all due respect, they just look like four interchangeable 80s rock guys. You know, yep. the teased out hair, the leather, the glasses, the jewelry. You know, it's, you know, but you get Jack there with that big nose, those bangs hanging down in front of his forehead and that uh, <laughs> redi- and that ridiculous bathrobe where it looks like he's got no shirt on underneath it. <laughs> yeah, this uh, Tracy, she's interesting because she's not, she's attractive. She's not super sexy. She's not super rough. Her eyes are pretty neutral. Like it was like they were trying to put this beautiful woman on the cover and keep the cover somewhat neutral, right? She doesn't have any facial expression. She got perfect well, th- skin, obviously. The thing I look at it is that she's one of those people where she's like, she's beautiful, but she's not overly like, she's not like over the top, like supermodel. She's just, yeah. she's kind of like a girl where you're like, she, not not the girl next door, but she's like hot and in like a uh, in an approachable way, shall we say? Yeah, yeah it's kind of yeah, very interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. This back cover, dude. That I think that's like a is it a jumpsuit or a or a long jacket? I don't know. What I know the hell. I can't tell. It, it's just not good. <laughs> it, 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 the it's, ring on the turquoise ring on every finger is a yeah. straight up stereotypical old lady biker move. Like I don't understand. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't understand the need for that. And it's in every video. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the sunglasses. <laughs> on that well, guy. That's Kendall, Kendall. No, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Go ahead. Zeus. Sorry. Do do? All right. So for me, the album, she, I think she's beautiful. I think she's yeah. like, 
I mean, you could see her playing a princess in a movie with a crown on her head, and yeah. then you could probably see her maybe <clears throat> in a couple of videos coming up. Yep. Like, oh, God damn, <laughs> she could play that. She's not like too like wild LA scene type, you know. No. I think she can pull it off. Um, I think that fucking shark fin looks like a dolphin. It looks weak. It, oh, it's it, terrible. It's a really right? bad effect. It's a really bad yeah, effect. Yeah, like you couldn't make that more menacing or right. maybe show some teeth, like the shark coming up a little bit or something. Right. They could have done a lot more, but, you know, it's great. Why? You, you can make that a lot more effective. Yep. But, you know, the band in the back, <laughs> there's a couple ball splitters on this fucking, in this group. <laughs> there, there really are. There are. Yeah. And, and Jack Russell's ball splitter, I got to tell you this story. Go ahead. All right. So when Twice Shy came out, Once Bitten, Twice Shy, the song was huge, remember? Yep. Oh, yeah. And there was a girl, she was popular. We all hook up with her. I've hooked up with her back then in high school and stuff. And remember drinking a monotomy up in oh, the fucking, yeah. Yeah. up in the thing. And I remember a couple of the kids going up to her because she had a little bit of a, you know, a little honker going, but she was pretty cute and stuff. Going, mama, my boy. Oh, <laughs> man. Come and on. Her and singing twice shy when she would walk by. She's like, why do you guys keep singing that song to me? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, <laughs> see bully mentality here. <laughs> she had no idea. I mean, we all hooked up with her. Was, oh, that's even lady. better. You all hooked up <laughs> yeah. with her. After you body <laughs> shamed her. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. She her body was that fucking ball splitter that she had. Oh god. You know, when she goes down on you and she fucking cuts yes, your balls. We know in two. The balls. Yes, we know what it means. Well, maybe some of these people out here don't. <laughs> oh, god. Anyway, uh, I had to give that little story here. Uh, I've been saving that for years. <laughs> the fucking Jack Russell knows. You've been waiting for a great white episode to share that story. <laughs> <laughs> with a poor girl. Ma ma ma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, that's the album cover. Yeah, let's get into some uh album um uh facts here, okay? So now this is uh Once Bitten album, uh, the album is their third studio album by Great White. It was released June 29th, 1987. Uh, recorded in California, Total Access Recording, Redondo Beach. And it's considered glam metal, blues rock, hard rock. Sounds about right. I yeah, would agree. I would, I, would, I would agree with all that. Yeah, a blues rock. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I like that they have that in there and it's listed as such. Yeah. Um, the album went all the way up to number twenty three on Billboard's two hundred. It's been certified platinum. Surprise! That's all it was. Mm-hmm. Um, it was produced by Alan Niven. Michael Lardy, who's the keyboard guitar guy, yep, and the guitarist Mark Kendall, yep, and uh, it's got a lot of songs here that are given written um, writing credit to that producer Alan Niven, and I know that you have a a little bit of background on that, Sonny, that you want to share. Yeah, so Alan Niven was their manager, right, and. In the 80s, I guess the thing was that if you got dropped by a major label, you were done. Like, there was no other label that was going to touch you that was worth anything. And Great White had gotten dropped by EMI when Shot in the Dark didn't sell that well. So they were ready to throw in the towel. They thought they were done like in 1985. And then Alan somehow, by some miracle, gets them this record deal. So Alan's been a huge fan and a huge pusher of the band. And later on, he was important in Guns N' Roses and some other bands. But he's he was a fan of Kendall's playing and Russell's voice to a point where he's like, I don't understand why the album is not selling. Like, there's something wrong with the way you guys are marketing us because we are not selling. But I think one of the changes that happened between those first two albums and this album is they got a little more mainstream and they were almost doing the last part of the new wave of British heavy metal type music. And as soon as, and maybe that's where Alan is involved. Maybe that's why he's involved in some of these, whether it's arrangements or lyrics, or I doubt he's involved in music. I don't know him to be a big musician, but I think even if it was an arrangement of the songs, it's like, guys, if you want to be radio friendly, you got to go listen to Cinderella. 
go listen to Bon Jovi, go listen to Poison. That's what's on the radio right now and it's working. And that stuff shows up in some of these songs later. Mm -hmm. So I think that's Alan kind of pushing the envelope there. Yeah. And and Alan, it's funny too, because Alan's also responsible for the band name because before way back, they, they, they performed as, as they were called Dante Fox. Yeah. And when Alan took over, he suggested that they change the name to great white. And it was funny after seeing, uh, Kendall, the blonde guy, he claims that he saw Mark Kendall sticking his head out of a car window and, uh, he was driving by and he called him, they go, he said, they goes great white. And he said that because he had the white blonde hair, he was using a white fender guitar. He always wore a white jumpsuit and white shoes. So like little things like that, I, those are the kind of stories about the history of bands that I love is that just situational things that turn a band's fortunes on its head, you know, a, a name change and in in where it came from, you know, if Mark Kendall had black hair, what, what would have, you know, what would have, what would have been the name of the band, you know? So different things like that, I think are interesting and you're right. It's, it's amazing what a manager can do for a band. Obviously as kiss fans, we know that we know what a band manager can do for a band, but yeah, Alan Niven, very, very important to their success, obviously. Yeah. And I think it's true today. It's, you're going to have to have some sort of break. You got to get yeah. lucky somehow, whether that luck is with the record company, a song, uh, a DJ in the past, somebody you run into a manager, like even today, there's got to be some luck involved. It doesn't really matter how good you are. You Absolutely. have to be good also. Yep. But you can be the best. If you don't get lucky, you're screwed anyway. Yep. Yeah. I, um, for me, I, I, to have a, a, I'm just surprised that the great white wasn't a name that was you know, already early, taken. Yeah. Yeah. As soon yeah. As Jaws and everything else came out. Yep. It's a cool fucking name and you could do such great imagery. Um, imagine if yep. they had like a fucking shark, um, like an Eddie type character throughout right. their stuff. I mean, it could yeah. have been something they could have taken advantage of regardless. It's, it's a cool name. Mm-hmm. Um, We've talked about the album cover. We've given a little bit of background into the album. You ready to get into the tracks? Before we do that, I just want to jump in real quick. It's interesting, too, because doing some background on this, the track listings on this are weird because we're obviously going to talk about the nine songs that are on the U.S. release. But in the U.K., there was like a completely like different track listing where... It 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 was missing four of the new songs that we got, and then it replaced them with songs from the 1986 Shot in the Dark album. And it, it was it, I thought that was kind of interesting. It kind of shows you like what like okay, you're trying to push your previous album over to the to the UK audience, but the US audience is going to get an entirely brand new album of nine songs. So I thought I thought that was kind of weird. But I know that you know record labels and management they always do weird things to try to push a band. So yeah, yeah. So let's uh let's get into the uh the tracks. First track. Here we go. Lady Red Light. Dude, that riff to start this album is amazing. I I love that the same riff ends the song. So uh the riff, okay, put that aside. Straight ahead rocker. I love that after kind of it starts with this riff and you're really getting into it that the music backs off a little bit during the verse. And it, the music almost becomes a little more mysterious. Like there, you know, it's a little plotting. Uh, Jack sounds great. Uh, the guitar solo is absolutely one you can sing. It's beautifully, beautifully crafted. There's no doubt. The lyrics. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused because, so he calls her lover. He calls her friend, but when he needs another, she's got a heart to lend. So if you already got a lover and you got a friend. The only person you're looking for is the person you're going to do. So what's the matter about their heart? Like, I'm a little confused there. Um, I'm not sure if you would have said, you know, a, a pussy to do, but I, I, because that doesn't rhyme, but there's something wrong there. Okay. But anyway. maybe, but maybe it's in the Ace Fraley form <laughs> of songwriting. Well, I just used the word lover. So maybe I just, what rhymes with lover? Other, I'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it makes sense or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. All in all, great opening song. Like if you were to if you were to go look at all the eighties and nineties albums that came out and you're looking for a great opening track, this would be one that you would have to look at. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, unbelievable opener. I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to sell me on 80s rock, when that riff kicks into gear and there's a tambourine going along with it, that t- I'm telling you, more bands use the tambourine. It just adds a vibe to it that I ca- that I love. When you hear that, and then the riff kicks in, and then you get with the tambourine. I'm like, oh, I just little things like that I love. And then the other thing I love about this album, we talk about keyboards. This is how you use keyboards. You use them subtly. You use them as an enhancement. You don't take over the song with them. It, it's a fantastic opener. The the bridge into the chorus, I absolutely love it. And then another thing I like about this, and they do this a couple other times on this album, is that the first verse musically is kind of loose. It's kind of rocking. And then after the chorus, when they go into the second verse, everything kind of tightens up a little bit. The drums are a little tighter. The guitars are a little bit chunkier and tighter. So you kind of you kind of moving through the song kind of differently, melodically and musically, which I love. Um, you get that little weird kind of synthesizer solo that goes into the guitar solo. And then other little things I love about this. I love when bands use phrasing that's going to show up later in a song. So when he's saying like, rock me tonight. I just love the fact that there's a song later on in the album called Rock Me. Little things like that I love about this album and, and this song specifically. Fantastic opener. Lady Red Light, written by Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven, and Michael Lardy. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, Sonny. The opening guitar riff and then the closing part. Um, and then I just love the guitar on this. Mm. And his vocals. I mean, I can say this throughout the whole thing. He's that... These two, um, that era, this era, he's one of my favorite vocalists. Yep. He's got a, he's got that Robert Plant voice, but it's like thicker. Mm-hmm. I, 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 hard to explain. Um, and his, just when it went, when I need another, I just, I just, again, I was describing that feeling when you're in the car and you're listening to this, you're singing along with it. You're <laughs> doing, you think you're Jack Russell with a smaller nose, but like you're, you're, you're like getting into this, right? You're like, fuck yeah. Like Lady Red. you're doing the sway. You're fucking got, yeah. the car. You're, yep. you're like, yeah, this song rocks. And, um, the one part I will, uh, the drums are very good on this too. Um, there's no need for that little keyboard solo thing they no. do before the guitar solo picks right. up. Uh, the music is just fucking phenomenal. But yeah. you forgot the video. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that chick. <laughs> you know, she was cute on the cover. She's hot Ooh. in the videos. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Licking the ice cream oh, on the motorcycle. Man. Oh, the oh. ice cream lick was uh, oh. that had me. Oh, but good stuff. One, yep. One other thing, someone <laughs> he continues these like wardrobe things. Jack Russell in these videos, not not good. Is there is there a need to have a pirate shirt tied up like you're a chick, like in the bottom part, like showing his midriff? Like what's he doing? But I don't want to be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're trying to make him a sex symbol, and he it's, is not. Or he's not. trying to make him a sex symbol. And no. all these and videos is, have yeah. his hair blowing, and no. the dude, and it's he's like kind of ooh into the the mic all the time. Yeah, yeah. dude. If you want to, if they want to make him a sex symbol, turn the lights down on the videos. <laughs> That's the only way. Give him use more shadows and more. And you can't uh, because that. <laughs> Beak will show up in the shadow. And you look <laughs> like his nose is making shadow puppets up against the wall. You can't do it. By the way, there's no way. By the way, I'm sorry. There's no way we can tag Jack Ru- Jack Russell in this episode when we go on social <laughs> media. So now. fucking awesome though. But you know, well, he knows what he think. He doesn't realize he's got a fucking schnoz. <laughs> but I'm know. telling you because when you watch the videos, it kind of feels like. All of the Tracy stuff is added afterwards. I think what happened yeah. is these three videos were done yep. and the producers are like, oh, nope. nobody's going to watch these videos unless we throw a woman in here doing something. 
Yeah. yeah. No one's no one's watching you, Jack. We love you, buddy, but no. Music is sexy, but they're trying to be like all smoldering, like ooh. Right. oh yeah, totally. They're trying to be all Dexter St. Jock. Yeah, ooh, like, oh, when I make love to you. When I need a lover. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, I'd like to make love to you. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 instead, like he's all like ooh, on his shoulder. And he's got a, like if you have a chick there, you like you get distracted, and you're not thinking of like what the fuck is this guy doing? Is he trying to come on to me? Like, what's he doing through the TV? And, but they look cool. Like, if he was like Bon Jovi up there doing that shit, yeah, I right. could oh, yeah. like working because the stage and all these concert shots, like not yeah. concert shots, but these performance videos, performance, yeah. the stage is awesome. It's a big stage. They're all up there separated from space and doing their own thing and kind of rocking out and stuff. And he looks like he'd be really cool, except he's just not a very what you would call a handsome man. Handsome. <laughs> and Boy, it yes. kind of throws things off a little, but he's fucking, the, the video is awesome. The song is awesome. Uh, let's go to track number two. Gonna get ya. So this riff, I was listening to the first poison album when I got this album. Oh, no. I like that first poison album. This riff is basically look what the cat dragged in. So if you listen to go, <laughs> go listen to that riff. This riff is basically the same thing. And then the vocal delivery to me is very Cinderella night. So like it could have been on the night songs album. Right. So there's some, uh, I think Alan Niven kind of getting in going, uh, guys, what you were doing a shot in the dark is not what's on radio right now. So if you want to be on radio, this is what you're going to have to do. I love the little solo riffing right out of the gate. I think Kendall has a ton of flavor to his playing. There's that blues riff. There's the definite groove. These songs are super easy to listen to. Um, I kind of like the little musical interlude into the, you know, the boogie solo. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) The the ooh, 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 and riding the rocket. That's (laughs) like, he kind of overdoes that a little bit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So, but it's a great one, two punch. I, I really like this song. Yeah, I'm surprised a song like this wasn't a hit because it's it's tailor made to be to be that MTV that pop metal late '80s hit. It, you know, it's got a <clears throat> it's a simple song. It's got a great little riff, super catchy sing along chorus. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a great song. You know, uh, I'll probably say this a million times. There's no no skippers on here for me. I mean, this one is probably a little bit simpler than some of the other songs. You know, it certainly isn't Lady Red Light in terms of the the composition of it, but um, Great catchy chorus, great upbeat song. I'm a big fan of it. Gonna get you. Mark Kendall, Alan Niven, Michael Lardy. Um, nice guitar opening again. They've been opening up with these great guitar little riffs and things that's going on. I just, you know, the song's about the chick who wants to get a little more after the show. The performance wasn't enough. She needs to take care of some business backstage of the boys. Um, the guitar fills are awesome. The riff is as well. And I just love stupid lyrics that stick with me. And she wants to ride a rocket. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> um, that shit's up. The breakdown before the solo just takes off. Mm. What a build up to that. Yeah. And it's just another one of the songs on this album. That's just, Makes you want to rock out. It's a fucking great killer track in the car, driving fast, windows down, you know? Yep. Anyway, up to song number three. Uh, Rock me. All right. So I've heard the first two and a half minutes of this album. Let me do the math here. Let's see. Once a week, uh, 20 years, carry the one. Uh, Probably (laughs) a thousand or so times. My woman thinks this is only a two and a half minute song because it's on our busy playlist. Baby. Oh, dude, the sunny. pace changes in this thing. Dear God. I'm telling you, you're getting busy that first two and a half minutes and you hear Jack say, see your man ain't here. Oh, he don't care. Boy. Right. So it's like, yeah. And the oh, build God. up, and then at two 30, it's all done. And by the time second verse comes, I'm sleeping like it's two <laughs> 30. That's it. That's it. You can't even microwave a hungry man dinner in two minutes and 30 seconds. You have to defrost it first. God, poor Sonny. Poor, poor, poor Sonny's wife. Oh, boy. Um, 
I think that normally I don't like the whole mood set at the beginning, but I think that 40, 50 seconds of mood set you get at the beginning is important to this song. I like the epic buildup. I love all the pace changes. I think personally, this is songwriter masterpiece for the simple blues rock that it is. I get it. It's not stairway. Uh, don't, don't get me there, but uh, it's a masterpiece for the stuff that I listen to. And then uh, there's parts of this song. I totally look forward to like when he says, you know, uh, so innocent, I know, like I have to sing that out loud. Kind of like mm-hmm. what Zeus How was saying. In the How does he sing it? So innocent, I know. Like, yeah, I exactly. That. How love it goes up. Yeah. And, yeah. Love it, exactly. Love it. Look forward to it every time. And then the come on and rock me before the outro solo. Like a, then the solo is not that long, even though the song seven minutes, like there is a lot to love about this song. There's no doubt. Here's one thing I hate. And it's got nothing to do with the song. There is so many damn edits to this song that changes the lyrics. Mm-hmm. If you get the single, it's only four minutes and it changes the lyrics. If you look at the video, it doesn't match what's on the album. And it's like, that part is a pain in the ass to me. I hate it when bands do that. It's like, if you're going to release the single, I get it. It has to be a radio edit because there's no DJ out there's going to play a seven minute song, but why do you got to change the lyrics? Like, I don't understand that, mm-hmm. but, uh, but I love the song. Absolutely. Yeah, Rock Me, this is the song that got me into Great White, the video, the hearing it on the radio, all that. Uh, for me, it's one of the, it, it's it's one of my, what, I would probably say if I was going to do a, you know, a Mount Rushmore hair metal type thing, th- this is up there. I never, ever get sick of it. I love that it's long because it's never boring. It, it, it starts off at one place, takes you on a journey, keeps you going all the way until the end. It's, it, it, it's, it's melodic. It's bluesy. It's soulful. It's 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 a brilliantly composed song, which is a reason why it was a hit, and there's a reason why people started paying attention to Great White when this came out. That intro, I love songs that build up to something huge at the end, and this song does not disappoint. It's always been a standout for me. Um, I think this might have been the thing that kind of pushed me into picking this album because having things on shuffle. And, you know, I was hearing this and then, and then it kind of jogged my memory. You know, I mean, I do listen to this album a lot, but not all the time. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to go back and let, let's, let's do this album for the album review crew. And, uh, couldn't have been, couldn't have been happy with the pick because this is just a, a song and a video that we'll talk about. Uh, it's just amazing. Rock me written by Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven, and Michael Lardy. It made it to number 60 on the charts, Hot 100, and number nine on Mainstream Rock. Um, the, did you, I'm surprised, Tom, you didn't mention the tapping in the beginning. Like, what's up with that? Oh, yeah. Let's get down to business. Former Vice President Al Gore is here. Yeah. He is a staunch advocate for the environment. DeAndre, it is such a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine, Al. Pleasure's all mine. (laughs) Now, you have a new book out called Our Choice, a plan to solve the climate crisis. Is that right? I do. This is an issue I've been working on for a long time, and I feel we have all the tools we need to solve this problem, (laughs) except perhaps the political will. Political will. Fortunately, the United in the United States, political will is a renewable resource. Renewable resource. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crisis of unprecedented, unprecedented scope. Unprecedented, baby. But I think we're up to the challenge. We got to get up, cause I got to say, ooh, we. What up with that? What up with that? but i love that because it's it's like and especially when you when you when you hear this song like in your car you're like i'm not hearing it because it's so quiet and so subtle as things kind of build up it really is a slow build but that (laughs) (laughs) what's up with that exactly yep um the harmonica the bass Mm -hmm. the blues guitar the drums and the vocals, as always, are just on point. The solo and the outro solo 
I mean, Sonny, you kind of hit it on the head. Like, I like the build up, and then boom, there it goes. Yep. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, it's just awesome. Yep. Um, it's you know, it's the song that obviously everyone, I think, in this group, like, heard and was like, oh shit, because everyone had MTV and was watching the videos at that time, and and you're like, oh, and that's what was fun. It reminds me of the old. Uh, uh, a similar era for us, Tom, with grunge, all of a sudden a new band would come out. You'd be like, who's this yeah. new band? Yeah. That's what it was like back then in those days. Like, who's this new band? Who's Cinderella? Oh yep. my goodness. Who's great white? Who's Tesla? Who's this? Like, and these bands are just coming out. And then you'd be like, you know, who's fucking nitro? Who's pretty boy Floyd? Like, <laughs> oh, no, you would no, God. you wouldn't. <laughs> oh God. Who's danger, danger. <laughs> oh. Before we get to the video, Michael Lardy. So seeing him live as many times as I have, and it shows up on this album a little bit. We need somebody to play keyboards. Hey, Michael. We need somebody to play second guitar. Hey, Michael. We yeah. need somebody to play the kazoo. Michael. We need somebody <laughs> to dance around. Michael. We got a, I think we got a saxophone part here. Michael. <laughs> like he is the most versatile guy. And yep. that's cool to have one guy that can do that because it opens up a bunch of things you can do in your career for that band. And he, he kind of, you know, does he do all of them super well? I don't know. I don't personally know the guy. Does them well enough to make a difference. And when you see him play the harmonica here, it's like, I guess I'd rather see him do all that than like what uh, uh, Tyler does in Aerosmith. It's like, well, let me grab that harmonica and play it for you. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Let somebody else do that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then they say, hey, hey, Michael, I want somebody to have a fucking hairdo that looks ridiculous. That'll be everyone will laugh at in 20 years. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah, and and not to pick on the poor guy, but but we yeah, will. If you look at his hairdo, you look at and you see that's what hair metal is because he could look normal with regular hair. Oh yeah, but it's just fucking uh, for no apparent reason hair sprayed up to the ceiling. Yep, and in you know he's the keyboard player. Settle down. You're not rocking out with a fucking leather jacket and your teased up hair. No, you're but, not. No. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get to the video. Obviously, it's a shorter version. Yeah, the chick is in it again. Smoke show as always, and you know they they do the um, build up to it when she gets revealed to be like some fucking mermaid with a with a stun gun with a what do you call it um, harpoon. harpoon harpoon yeah. that she fucking takes out fucking Jack Russell's no- nose or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big enough target. Um, <laughs> Does Mark Kendall have eyes, by the way? No. Does he have eyes? Yeah. I guess, <laughs> can't, I don't can't know. Show them. Is he blind? Like, what the fuck? He's always got those shades on. I, I just think, you know, the, the, the video is fun. Is what got us into it. And to get back to our fucking punching back, my, Michael Lardy, he, too, is trying to be, like, all sexy Doing like the keyboards with the sh- the the smoldering look and the in the shoulder dance where he's like, yeah. Ooh, dude, you're playing the you're playing the keyboard, relax. Ooh, yeah, like, and like they're they're trying to be like, ooh, ooh, move to left, ooh, like porn moves. Yeah, he's exactly. doing, like, it's not working, buddy. No. Um, fun video, fun big stage as usual as we talked about on Lady Red Light and the chick. What's her name again? Tracy Martinson. Tracy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She she's hot. The, the The video is cool. It's fun. She's in it. But I'll tell you right now, what a buzzkill because she's smoking hot. Camera goes on her. She grabs her zipper and starts to pull it down. And it's fucking. It's like the sequel to Splash. I'm seeing all these <laughs> fish scales. I'm like, I don't want to see any of that. It's like, come on, you you like this blazing hot blonde, and I don't want to see that. No. What fucking bang that mermaid? Oh, come on, here, bring that fishy bush next to me. <laughs> it's, it's like the creature from the Black Lagoon, but you're a hot blonde. I don't want to see that. No, oh, gross. And I'm you- sorry. I'm sorry. Mark Kendall looks like his guitar is too small for him. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like he's wrestling with it. Like he's holding it weird. I'm like, is that not the right size for you? It's like he's holding it. I don't know if it's the way he's holding it or I don't know. But I'm like, he was making me nervous every time they would go to him and he would solo. I'm like, it, it's like a guitar hero guitar. It's not the right size or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Help 
if he wasn't Sonny, six foot eight. Sonny, thoughts on the video? <laughs> uh, I love the video. I think, uh, I like I said, I hate that radio edit shit that they chase. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, man, does the band show their energy? And I love that huge stage, kind of like what you were talking about on the Lady Red Light thing. And Jack really shows his energy, right? I, yeah. I just, yeah, the sell on the ooh and the ah and the smoldering. <laughs> Like, yeah, if it's John or if it's Coverdale, yeah. Like, if they got one of those guys doing that, then or that's, Kip, that's or, up. Or, or, or Kip, Kip Winger. Winger. Yeah, or Kip yeah, Winger. They're trying to do, you know what it reminds me of? Uh, what's that? What's the Bon Jovi one, that um, performance video? Um, oh, no, I'm trying to blank. Want to oh, get her oh, no, 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 well, that's I, I will die. What's that? I oh, I'll die for you. I'll be there you? for you. I'll be there I'll for, be you. There for oh, you. Okay. That These one. These five words. Do you remember I them? You? When yeah. John is like this. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And the band is all like smoldering and yeah. Richie's in there going, ooh. But they can and pull they, that off because they're all yeah. good looking dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Jack looks like he would. And then all of a sudden. Like I said, turn, 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 Jimmy dim the lights. No. Dim the lights. <laughs> Honey, what is that in your face? Is that a plantain? That? <laughs> it's like that thing in the naked gun. Hey, you get something on your nose. You get a fucking <laughs> banana drops. <laughs> the, gi- the giant guy. You never see him. He's so big. You get something on your nose. Oh, no. Other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whole banana. <laughs> you want this, Chief? Yes, uh, thank you, Al. There's something on the side of your mouth, Al. No, no. The other side. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next track, number four. Ugh. All over now. So we're in the fourth track, and you can get a glimpse of this band knows what they're doing. So I wanted to share a sh- story with you guys. So oh, yeah? Lauren Black, who's the bass player, him and Jack are partying all night one night, and they're going to shoot the Rock Me video the next day. Jack is begging Lauren to go back with him to the house get a couple hours sleep then we'll go to the shoot together lauren's like nope i'm gonna go with my girlfriend i'll see you at the shoot shows up to the shoot for four or five hours late and i guess he had a habit of doing this and they fired him that night because alan was like we finally got something we're about to break big and we just can't deal with him no more right and so they knew they had something because songs like this are lost amongst the singles all over now is a great song. The end's a little simple. I wish there was more guitar noodling on the way out, but it's kind of up tempo. It's anthemic. It's about being down and out. It's got a great chorus, a great solo. Now, I don't know if this album could have released five singles, but this is a song that would have been great on rock radio. I'll tell you that much. I love this song. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And I love the thing I love about this, and I love when a lot of bands do this is during the, uh, the chorus, you kind of get that subtle acoustic guitar overlay on top of everything. It kind of adds a little bit of adds, it adds, adds a little something to them, but you're right. It's a perfect, perfect riff for a, for a hit. And it's weird to me. And I don't know, my ears are kind of weird sometimes when I'm listening to things, but when the song, fir- when, when the song first kicks into gear, maybe like literally the first one or two seconds, the way that the drum and guitar sounded like immediately, it reminded me of, ZZ Top from the Eliminator era album of of the way that their drums and guitars sounded, and, and I mean it, that that quickly kind of you know dissolves as the song kicks into gear and it, it becomes a, a great 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 white song. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a standout song. And, and like you said, how many singles can an album have? This easily could have been one for sure. All over now, Mark Kendall, Alan Niven, Michael Lardy, another great opening riff. Uh, the lyrics are fucking awesome. Uh, I love another great bridge into the solo. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that on this. The chorus is phenomenal. So are the verses. Jack's voice is awesome on this song. Yep. Um, you know, the solo is fantastic. The vocals, the drumming. It's just... It's one of those songs that if people don't know the album, never had the album, just like, oh, yeah, I know that song. They think they did Save Your Love and Rock Me. Oh, that Lady Red Light. <laughs> no, there's a lot more on this album. This song, more than any song, 
is always on my like list when I would do like hair metal things. Yep. I would always put this song on. It stood out for me back then. And, you know, no one ever said to me, oh, you got to hear this or this. I, I, and the fact that it sounds like all of us have the same feelings about this song mm-hmm. uh, makes me feel like shit, man. If this got out to more people, it definitely would have been a hit. So no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to uh, the next track. Mistreater. All right. I like this song. Let me start there. Uh, it follow, follows the same pattern of everything we've just heard. There's, but some of these other songs just flat out better. And this is where I notice Jack kind of overdoes the sexy wine thing a little bit too much, right? She's a mean yes. mistreater. Oh. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, come on, dude. Like, a little bit of that's okay, but it made this song go a little long in the tooth a little bit, right? It's like, it doesn't need to be as long as it is. Now, I I do like it, though, when the dynamics are there, that kind of gets created, and then he punches you in the head when he starts rocking a little bit, so it does create this dynamic that I like. The first 35 seconds of the song, probably don't need it. The last 30 seconds, probably don't need it. The honky-tonk piano, eh, I think you subtract it. You don't lose anything out of the song. So the song's good. I like it. But compared to the four we just heard, to me, I started hearing some things that maybe I was like, eh. I wouldn't skip it, but it's not as good as the other four. Wow. Okay. Well, I like this song a hell of a lot more than you do. I, 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 I there's really nothing in this song that kind of is un, unpleasant to me. I mean, I, I love that little intro. Then it kicks right in. I love anything with an intro or a buildup. I think it just adds a little bit of a dynamic, a little bit more emotion to the song. The piano is okay. It's a little bit maybe too pronounced. I understand what they're trying to do. You probably could have pulled back on it. I love the chorus. I love the chorus. I think she's a mean mistreater. I, I love the chorus. And one of the cool things I like near the very end of the song, and I like when bands do this sometimes, is you know the, the outro chorus. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. It's repetitive. And then he throws in... She's a stone trick teaser. And then he gets back into, she's a real mistreater. Like he just throws that in once just to kind of mix it up. And I, I like those kind of little subtle things that kind of add some flavor to the song. But yeah, I like this song a hell of a lot more than Sonny. I'm anxious to see what Zeus thinks of it, but I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Mistreater written by Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven, Lorne Black. I am going to fall on the sunny side. You're right. It's too fucking this is the kind of shit that robert plant does sometimes in the zeppelin stuff and it's just like it's just too effeminate it, uh, it's it's the it's the dice doing like women uh, <laughs> 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 uh, are you gonna call me uh, you you're such a me mistreater mistreater like is he trying to take a shit what is he doing yes that too <laughs> yes it just <laughs> It's just a little too, you know, again, it ain't bad. It's not a bad song. I like it, but it's just, um, after the four fucking kick-ass songs, it takes, you know, it it just, it's just a weaker track than those four ones. It's not a bad song. Um, it just needs to, you know, he needs to settle the fuck down with this. Oh, you mean mistreat. Ooh. See, now we definitely can't tag him in this. Now we just ba- <laughs> now it's turning into a Jack Russell bash. This ain't right. Oh no, 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 no. I know. I'm That's gonna be a new thing for us on our polls. Should we tag the Should artist? we tag the band member that we just destroyed for three hours? <laughs> what part did we destroy him? Uh, I don't know. His voice, his ability, his, his appearance, his, fucking, his appearance, his looks, his fucking uh his status in life. His other than that, decisions. other than that, great record. Two thumbs up. Check it out. (laughs) They're going to start changing this to the asshole review crew instead of the album review crew. What are you talking about? We gave, we ranked in the top 10. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but you were mean to him. You were a real mistreater. No. (laughs) Mistreater. Anyways, let's, uh, let's move it on to the next track. Here we go. Never change heart. I kind of actually like the cheesy lyrics. There's some cheesy ones in here. I love the chorus. I love that musical part after the solo before the final choruses happen. 
I love the fact that they use just enough backing vocals on this album. Like there's places where it's perfectly placed and it's not like this big Def Leppard, big backing vocals. Cause they could have easily done that. That was already out there. And we had heard that on pyromania, but they didn't do that. And I think that's awesome. The bridge in the song, dude, like this is not, there's one thing where Fraley's like just rhyming every word he can think of to rhyme. <laughs> right. But, that whole move on, be strong, learn to carry on, never change heart. And he hits that note, note to the solo. Dude, that is just simply awesome. Like it's just well constructed. And then the song ends well for a song that nobody's ever heard. That's the crazy part about this album. You said it perfectly. Standout track for me here. Uh, again, I love the, I love the little moody intro. It adds something to it. And when it kicks into gear, that little, when it kind of kicks into gear, it it reminds me of like something from like an eighties TV show, like a police drama or something. And then the song gets and gets it going. But I love this because it it shows a different range for Jack. It's a, it's a lot more emotional, but it's, it's believable. You know, I know we kind of just bash in a little bit of his, his things on mistreat or, but I feel like when he's singing in this song, he's got that range, but it's, it, it sounds soulful. It's not squealy or screechy. The chorus is spectacular. And, and and they do this again in this song. The second verse is a little bit different than the first verse. It's, it, it's constructed a little differently with this, this, that, that subtle, those keyboards are in the background, but they're just, they're just enough there to kind of accent what you're listening to without taking the song away from you. Like kissed it in the crazy nights album where the keyboards are just so over the top that it kind of distracts you from what's going on. These are well-used keyboards, I think here. Um, and it's it, it just another great song. It shows his range and it shows what the band can do songwriting wise. Cause you've had a lot of kind of pop rock hits here. This is a little bit more emotional, a little bit more serious for them, but it still rocks out. Great tune. Never Change Heart, Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven. Yeah, slower part picking up. I love when they build their songs up. It it really works. It's a good song. Um, He does a little bit of a particular thing when he accents his voice on something. When it says, right, um, there's... There's, you know, I, I, I can't think. I, it reminds me of like fucking like uh, the Bruins coach, Claude Julian, with this French Canadian <laughs> accent. That we're going to play the game tonight. Tonight. The right to go to the puck before the other guys tonight. It's cutting um, it off. Yeah. He's just, he, he's got that little bit of an accent on some of the verses on this. And, and, you know, the song kicks ass. I like the theme that it runs throughout it. And just another good track on a good album. So don't have much else to add for that. Um, let's go to the next one. Fast Road. So the first 16 seconds, that little drum part thing. Oh, dude, that is all kinds of awesome. Because up until now, obviously, you know, the bass player and the drummer are there, but you don't really key in on them at all because they're just kind of keeping the groove that somebody's paying them to keep, basically. And then you got Kendall going from this normally blues based guitarist to more of a speedy guitar God on this song. And I guess it makes sense a little bit because he's competing with everybody in 87, trying to be a speed metal guitar. Uh, the solo is very Vi to me and I absolutely love it. Um, I guess he didn't want to get left out in the dust and the songs got this cool pace changes. One thing I am an absolute sucker for, and I don't really know how to describe it, but it's that you do a verse and then you do one line of the chorus yes, and then do the second verse and then do the full chorus. Love that. T- Tony and Johnny do that a lot in Restrained too. It's it's a hook that gets me every time. I, I don't know what it is about it, but more bands don't do it. But I absolutely love this song. Yeah, Fast Road. So it's interesting because a lot of times I'm not a huge fan of f- really fast paced songs, regardless of who's writing them, whether it's, I, I, you know, I've said, I don't like fast kiss, you know, if I'm listening to Metallica or a Pantera and they're playing some fast, fine, but this is like a bluesy rock band. So when you first hear it, you're like, okay, what are they doing here? Are they just trying to throw in something different, but I'll tell you right now, this song is spectacular. And I think the one reason that it hooks me in 
is that usually when you're hearing a fast paced, upbeat rock song, the vocals kind of take control of the song, whether it's, it's very aggressive sounding, you know, screeching, screaming, or, or that Jack is, it's amazing what he pulls off in this song, because when the song kicks into gear, He's just playing laid back, soulful singing over this really fast paced, aggressive beat. His vocals are not fast and aggressive. They increase in volume. They increase in range, but they're always under control. He never takes over like he's screaming. I mean, yeah, he raises his tone to kind of get that emotion out. But I think that's the thing I love about this is that his vocals are really controlled and it adds to the the, the tempo of what you're listening to. I love the harmonies during the chorus you know, that you can hear. And then the, and then the guitar solo, you get that, that, those, those harmonics that are going on during the guitars standout track for me. It's just, it's an unusual song that you wouldn't expect from them and they do it very well. Fast road written by Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven, Lauren black, Audi Disbrow. That's a drummer. Yeah. I know. I'm just being, I'm adding some context. The fact that we haven't heard him at all in this, on this uh, <laughs> songwriting credits Yep, and Michael Lardy. Uh, the, he, he obviously makes his appearance because of the drum and that galloping sound oh, yeah. that's going on, the rhythm that's going on throughout this song. I'm, I'm on the opposite of you guys. This is a letdown for me. I, I don't Ooh. like them doing this. Wow. They are like the hard rock, melodic, fucking great riffs. This is them trying to, I feel like, trying to get a, an Ingve song in or okay. a, an Iron Maiden Judas Priest. It's, it, it doesn't suit them well. I think I think you know it's not bad. I, I don't sit there and be like, oh, this song is horrible. I, I I can deal with it. I don't turn it off. But compared to the other songs, it's just it it falls short in my opinion compared to the rest of this album. That's all. I, I agree with what you're saying, and normally I would feel the exact same way. But uh, as I said, I think Jack's vocals save it from becoming a complete Ingve Iron Maiden song. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying. I, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, I can say that about everything he does. I love his voice. Yeah, I mean, he does sing well. So okay, I was going to say like- I don't agree with you, and that's what I normally say. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> um, let's go on the edge. Okay, so let's start with <laughs> those notes that Jack hits right out of the gate are crazy, right? That that's nuts. But this is is this blues metal? Like this is, this is going back to somebody won the fight that we got to have one shot in the dark, original, great white self-titled album type song on this album, because this is a little bit of what they were doing and it works. And I think Jack sounds a little angry in the verses a little bit and the little guitar fills that Mark's doing after each line, the verse, I love that. But then the whole guitar solo thing, it's cool. But it gets a little long in the tooth. Like, it's a long of the shark tooth. You get that? Oh, um, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that? Uh, the solo's a little long for me. You know, they're trying to, like, if they were to use that buildup, like, at the beginning of the song, maybe that works. But to use the buildup into a guitar solo that lasted just a little too long, and then the last 30 seconds are kind of a waste. So I like the song, but here's where I'm going to say what Zeus just said. This is the song that maybe doesn't quite fit the album to me. This is, this is getting a little too metally for me. Yeah. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think this is again, another attempt kind of like fast road to, to do something different, uh, and a, a very aggressive riff an aggressive song, a much heavier song than we've heard so far. The lyrics are darker. Um, you know, you, you mentioned, I love that after each line, a little guitar fills, a little noodling that's going on there. Gr- another great bridge into the chorus. I love the chorus and how they accentuate the chorus with some additional music, you know, the keyboards, etc. I get what you're saying. That mid, that breakdown in the middle where it's just the bass and the drums and then the guitars come in and they kind of solo and do stuff. It, I don't mind it, but it, it's too long. But I, I like what they were trying to do, but they should have cut it back maybe by a minute or so. Uh, but I, I don't mind the song because I think it just shows something different. It, it's it's a different type of song that we've seen on the album so far. So I like it. Uh, on the edge, Mark Kendall, Jack Russell, Alan Niven. For me, I like it. I think that chorus is awesome. It's catchy as mm-hmm. hell. Mm-hmm. And I like that it's something different as far as uh, lyrical content goes. Uh, the breakdown before the solo is just 
awesome as always. They love to build those solos up, and it's fantastic. And um, and if you hear it, you can almost hear like the bass and the guitar is uh, the bass and drums are playing, and the guitar is almost like medicine. It's like yep. lurking in the background, almost like a shark. Get it? Yep. Just yep. lurking and lurking in the background. Like swimming around and it's popping around between the bass and drums going off. Um, I, I think it's great. I think the chorus is great. But I was partly picturing him to say in the lyrics of, of this song, and I know it's true, I got a bad attitude, but I'm down <laughs> on my luck. Bitch, tell me, what's your excuse? Tell me. Yep. Lady luck. Yep. Kind of sounds like I- that. Yeah, yep. it's. I felt like it was Lady Luck from Tesla. Okay, um, I can see that. The song is great. The song is great. Nice. Um, last track. Here we go. Very interesting to end the album with "Save Your Love." You know, I guess you could argue maybe you should have been a, at a different place in the album. It's a great hair metal ballad, whether you want to admit it or not. It's got the 80s cheesy lyrics. I get it. It's slow. It's prodding, and then it builds. Get that. Jack can holy fuck sing. There is a passion, a sexy, a pain, a feel to his voice that is there. If he would have had Kip Winger's looks, dude, he becomes (laughs) the super stud of the late 80s with this song. Because these are the songs that put Brett Michaels on the map. Right. And Brett Michaels couldn't sing this song like the way Jack Russell sang it. Brett Michaels can't sing poison songs. <laughs> well, that's beside the point. And then the perfect, like it, it could, while they're making the song and they're writing it, it's obvious that they're realizing this thing's going to be the single. This thing is going to do well. You could have got a guitar player that would have said, okay, I'm going to put a two minute solo on it. It's going to start slow and it's going to go fast. Then it's going to end up back slow and everybody's going to know I'm this guitar God. And instead you get this perfect 43 second solo. And it's like, get back to Jack because this is Jack's song. Right. And I love it. It's not loved by all great white fans. I could tell you that because of the cheesy lyrics, but for the time and place, this was the song that said, all right, I got to go get that album. Great, great, great song. Um, the lyrics, you know, maybe leave a little bit something to be desired, but the way Jack delivers them, you believe him. It's emotional. It's passionate. The solo, like you said, fantastic solo. And again, another great buildup that takes you on a journey to the end where it's almost like goosebump inducing. If you're a fan of the song for me, I'll just end with this for me. This is by far. And for me, it's really not even close in terms of a true ballad, a heartfelt, emotional power ballad. This is by far the best for me. It's not even close. I mean, I know people say that home sweet home is a great one. I love love song by Tesla, but this adds something emotionally speaking where it's almost believable in the way the song starts one place and ends someplace. This has always been my unquestionable favorite power ballad from this, from this era without a doubt. Great way to end the album for me. Save your love written by Jack Russell and Jerry Lynn Williams, who was uh, apparently some songwriter though of some prominence there. It made it to number 57 on us billboard top 100 mainstream rock. Number nine. Love the buildup. Oh, come on. Let's be honest. The vocals are off the charts. It's a very Zep like song. Very. Um, the solo's fantastic. Um, this is a song that someone should do on American Idol or The Voice. Mm-hmm. You want you want to hear me belt out a song? Let me play this song for you. And if I can hit this, then you you know you got a singer on your hands because nobody. Because fucking Brett Michaels isn't singing this fucking song. Nope. David Lee Roth isn't singing this song. Nope. You know, they're not going to be able to hit this. But the one thing I want to get on, and I, I mean, I heard Sonny say, and then Tom, you echoed it. What's wrong with the lyrics? Yeah, I don't think they're that bad. I think, I think, I think Sonny maybe piled on a little bit more uh, than me. I mean, there's, there's a little but bit you of mentioned them. 
Yeah. It's a cheese. Save your love. Yeah. I mean, like, it's he's not fucking. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of mad. And you're now kind of sad. No, I agree. I, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah. They're just, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not Edgar Allan Poe. I don't know if Poe was singing, you know, ballads, but, you know, when it's late at night or all that I see, you know, it's just, it, it, it they're a little amateurish at times. They work. Don't get me wrong. Sophomoric. Yeah. Sophomoric. There but, you go. but you're right. They work. They and they're yeah, believe and I th- and I, th- and and I, I think it. the thing is I think the thing is like I said they're believable because Jack Russell is singing them very emotionally. Yeah, so but it, that's so, why I never right. okay. I never in my time ever thought when I heard this song like oh it's lyrics. Oh, yeah. I think oh, I think oh. they're fucking great. There's not one thing here if you notice when we do hair metal or any kind of this time that we're laughing about the lyrics. There's right. nothing wrong with the lyrics and they they're pretty good all lyrics all the way around. They're yeah. not fucking let me think about, you know, macroeconomics and, friggin no. and you know, uh, political theories and things like that. But it, they're decent. They're not, mm-hmm. they're yeah. not ace lyrics. They're no. decent lyrics. Right. And I, I just, I know, I don't understand the cheesiness of this because I, I mean, I, I think the song is a, a, a beautiful ballad. Uh, the vocals is what makes this. Yeah, it's not the melody, it's not the thing like that. It's his vocals that really make this song work. Uh, let's get to the video. It's the same girl, Jack Russell again, trying to be all ooh, smoldering in his ruffled pirate shirt in the puffy shirt. Yeah, yeah, it's just. <laughs> but the the chick is in it, so yeah. Oh. Ooh. My here 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 are the notes I have for the video for my notes. Pirate shirt, comma, <laughs> pirate shirt, comma that nose. <laughs> Those are the only lyrics I have. Those are the only notes I have for the video. Pirate the, shirt, <laughs> that nose. <laughs> I thought the instruments hanging. It's kind it of was kind of cool. It cool. was kind of cool. You don't see that. And, and, and of course, like Zeus you already said, the, the, the cover girl looks just oh. bla- blazing hot in this. Yeah. I love that all, in all these three videos, if I can tie them together, that she has like different outfits on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then she'll go into the leather skirt. That was the hottest, though. Oh, and she's and the she is licking in the leather skirts. What and she me. is legitimately hot. Like she's not like 80s rock video hot. She's hot. She's like, um, like a rich man in California's wife. Yeah. Not the yeah. not the fucking chick from Fallen Angel in the poison video. Ooh, they just she's hot off though. The she's hot. She's yeah. hot though. But, but you ain't bringing <laughs> home you ain't bringing it to uh, home to mom and dad and you ain't fucking bringing no. her to like a fucking, you know, uh a ball at the White House. You ain't dressing that up like that. She's but looking good. Year, she's looking year, good. You can <laughs> skank her out. You can fucking <laughs> Dress her up. You can do all sorts. She's looking real good. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, that is Great Whites Once Bitten. As usual, before we move on to rankings and stuff, just to give some final thoughts and clarity on the album. Tom, you want to start us off? Yeah. Uh look, I picked this album. Uh it's it's just it's a standout album for me in general and a really big standout for me from this era. Um, no skips on this for me. Every song I love, which is rare, especially on this, uh, there's probably one or two other albums that we've reviewed where I can put into that category. Um, I think the production's great. Jack Russell's his vocals. We've said it many times carries it. They do a couple different things on there. They got the standout ballad. They got the epic track. They got the hits. They got the deep cuts. It, it's got everything. If you're a fan of this era of music, I would think that you're a fan of this album. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the feedback is on this, but great album. Happy to talk about it. Stand out for me. Yeah, for me, there's no Robert Plant. There's no Randy Rhodes. There's no Billy Sheehan. There's no Bonham. There's no John Lord. But God damn, is it a good album? Like there's, there's just nobody super flashy in this band, but it, they make it work. I listen to this album regularly. Desert Island album for me, 46 and a half minutes of yep. awesome. It was a pain in the ass to try to figure out how to rank these songs because there's so many good ones. And this is a fifth um, Desert Island album we've reviewed for me. So uh, I love the album. I'm glad you picked it. Otherwise, I would have had to. So either way. Yeah, yeah for me, uh, Great White is just one of those forgotten bands of this era and a great one. 
one that I would be like, fucking go listen to them. I heard them live. They're fuck kick ass. They this this lineup of the band, uh, this era of the band is is phenomenal. The the music is great. Uh, Mark Kendall's guitar, which is very underrated. You don't have to be like it's the old Gene Simmons. You don't need to be fucking. You could just crank me some great riffs. And and Jack's voice is just phenomenal. The band s- plays with them, the drums and the guitars and the bass and keyboards and stuff. It just works. This whole album works. It's got so many songs that I'm like so underrated for me that I play that nobody else or I would think in my head or like putting it on a playlist or something like that. And I fucking love that. And I love it. Um, when I think of Great White, unfortunately, I always think about, and we talked about it in our live cast. And I don't want to get too much into this. Um, you know, me and Tom of the era, and we live in this area. And uh, unfortunately, everybody knows about the fire, the station house fire. And that easily could have been me, you, or Jimmy at that place. And God bless all those poor people that, you know, perished in that fire. God bless anyone that was affected by that. And I'm sure it's messed up the band as well. And they're, and they're unfortunately tarred with that right or wrong. They are, it's stuck with them. So I wanted to mention that a little bit, just get it out there. But uh, this is a, 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 an episode on music. We're not talking about that stuff, but uh, we, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact of that and bless those people, and may they all rest in peace for un- that horrible tragedy. Um, but we do have this album, and this album is a great pick, and may have been one of mine as well. So great job on that, Tom. Yeah, and, and I just want to add. Sonny brought up something that we we didn't we haven't really talked about a lot, and it, maybe maybe it's the reason why Great White wasn't next level is they're very anonymous. You know, they don't have a George Lynch, they don't have a Warren D. Martini, they don't have a Tommy Lee on drums, they don't have a you know a Vince Neil or a Brett Michaels as vocalists. They're just guys who play great and sound great. I mean, we know we we've, we've had some fun with Jack Russell's appearance, you know, throughout the episode, but. They're just a band that came out in this era. There's nothing really that you can really pinpoint like, oh, my God, George Lynch's tone or Tommy Lee is a banging the shit out of those drums. It sounds fantastic. They're just there. And, and that could be one of the reasons why they never took off. You know, some people say the same thing about Tesla. One of the reasons why, you know, they never were next level. They're, they have a diehard fan base, all three of us included. But they don't have those, those, those next level superstar musicians. They also don't have the looks because meth exactly is is looking exactly. pretty messed up. Exactly. Well, you get you know he's the, he he's the host of Creep Show, so that's yeah. not bad. Yeah. It's it's very blue collar, yeah, right? Exactly. We were talking about it with ACDC. It's blue collar music. Yep. These guys with the hard hats take the hard hats off and eat their lunch, and this is yep. the kind of stuff to listen to. And that's not bad. No, no, no. Yeah, and unfortunately, they get lumped in. Oh, that's hair metal. It's fucking fun, great music. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yep. Well, we get to the part where we start ranking. So, Tom, this is your album. You will go uh, Tom, me, then Sonny. So, Tom, track number nine for you. All right. Sonny hinted at this already. My first three were locked. They were locked. The rest of this album, literally coin flip, dart throw, whatever you want. Because my ninth song today could be my fourth song tomorrow. So, with that being said, my ninth song is going to get you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know the you red guys are, got fucked up already. Yep. You guys are going to hate me on this. That's okay. That's okay. Um, number nine for me, fast road. Okay. I think it's the most unique track on this album. I, I, agree. Doesn't I hear you. I, I give you that. Yeah, it stands. It's a standout and maybe not in a good way for some people. Yeah. For, uh, when I was ranking this, the first four was a lock. Yep. Five through nine was a dart throw. Yep. So I went with Mistreater as number nine. Okay. Uh, number eight for me was Never Change Heart. And and I love that song, but something had to be number eight. Uh, Tom, I agreed with you. Number eight, Never Change Heart. Okay. Uh, I had On the Edge at number eight. Okay. On the Edge is my number seven. Number seven for me, Mistreater. <laughs> Mystery. Oh, all right. 
It's like Pat singing Great White. Miss Trita. <laughs> if we didn't pile on anymore, now we're saying he sings like Pat from Saturday Night Live. There's very few albums where the three of us absolutely love the album, but people are going to take away from that. You guys shit on the freaking band and Jack Russell right. the entire time. That's right. <laughs> and it's not a fucking uh, group pick. No. <laughs> we all love this. We all love the album, and it's an individual pick. That's a rarity. Someone's got to go. On. Hey, Jack, did you hear this fucking asshole crew from fucking Boston and San Fran or wherever the fuck Sonny's from? <laughs> wherever the fuck he's from. <laughs> go ahead, Sonny. Shit all over you. Oh, what you got for we're seven? at you for number six. Oh, you did. You did. What was your seven? My seven was on the edge. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, number six. Oh no, wait, 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 I'm wait, sorry. No, no, no. Was never change heart. My seven was never. Change yeah, that's heart. your seven. Okay. All right, so my but so we're back. We're to me for number six. My number six is all over now. <gasps> <laughs> I knew Zeus was going to get upset over that, but I love the song. I told you it's impossible. <laughs> number six for me on the edge. All right, uh, number six for me was gonna get you. Number five for me, fast road. Uh, number five for me. <laughs> oh, you God. Here we go. Save your love. Oh, it is, come on. I love the song. It's ridiculous. Number five for me. Save your love. What? <laughs> what? We love I love the that. Other stuff what? Even more. What's better? Great White, Save Your Love or Dynasty Kiss, Ace Freely, Save Your Love? Uh, Great Dynasty. White. Oh, Zeus says Zeus says Dynasty. I love I love Ace's songs on Dynasty. The best yeah, part of that song the is whole, Paul's the, the best. Save your love. That's the the best part it. of that song save is it. Paul's obnoxious background lyrics. Anyways, we'll cover that for the Dynasty review. Save uh, your love. Yeah, I love that when he does that. Yeah. Uh, number four for me, Mistreater. <laughs> <laughs> Number four for me, Lady Red Light. Wow, number four. Four for me was all over now. <laughs> Three for me, Lady Red Light. Three for me, Rock Me. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Three for me, Rock Me. All right. <laughs> you guys can both fuck <laughs> off. <sighs> Two, save your love. It's one A, one B, but something. Save your love. Save it. <laughs> Save it. Save it. Stop sharing it. <laughs> See, now I have the Ace Freely di- Dynasty. Save your love stuck in my head. <laughs> We've had some good times, but now they're gone. So long. Meow, meow, meow. We love that stupidity. So long. All right, what are we on to? Two. Number two? two. Yeah, two for you. Gonna get you. Oh, wow. Okay. Great song. Uh, number two for me was Lady Red Light. Okay. Number one for me, no surprises. Rock me. You guys are insane for not having that number one. <laughs> oh, sorry. We didn't pick the fucking easy target. That's right. That is right. The best song. The song I play more than any other great white song. My favorite deep track off maybe any fucking album from this era is all over now fucking song kicks ass the guitar the vocals are off the charts it's the best song in this album all over now it's a great song and by the way one talk about jack russell's appearance yet not yet what do you what are your thoughts on that (laughs) i was giving it such praise i felt like we were being too positive number one absolute best song on this and if you grew up in this era and you were a teenager in this area like I was, and you were getting into the Rats, the David Lee Ross, the Van Halens, the Cinderella's, the Poison, all meshed into one, and has got the blues feel, Fast Road. I absolutely wow. love that song. Interesting. Okay. Cool. So your number one is my number nine. That's right. Wow. That's okay. Your number two is my number nine, I think, Zeus. So they're all over the place there. But I think that also shows how great this album is because my number nine could be my number three or four. You know what I mean? No, my number nine could be number nine. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right. So top four at the fourth position came in. Save your love. Third was all over now. Two was lady red light. And number one was rock me. That's 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 correct. That's yeah, correct. So the three singles plus all over now. Basically. Okay. Perfect. Not going to argue with that. Great. So I fucked your fast road, didn't I? That's okay. <laughs> I did because if I had a little bit that, that proves how great it is. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. That's why I didn't make it. Thank God. Woo. Now let's get to the other part of the episode reviews. And that is when we rank this against all the previous albums that we've reviewed. So this is the fun part where I get to run down all the albums we've reviewed before. And we have reviewed Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, White Snake Slide It In, Van Halen, OU812, which still is by far not even close our most listened to episode. I don't get that. I, I don't either. Um, it's not even close. Yeah. It smokes everything. Yep. Uh, Soundgarden, Super Unknown. Def Leppard, Pyromania, Metallica Load, Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind, Bon Jovi, Debut, Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz, Alice in Chain, Jar of Flies, Winger, Debut, Single, Soundtrack, Tesla, Mechanical Resonance, Ingve Malmsteen's Odyssey, Hailstorm, Debut, Rat, Detonator, ACDC, Highway to Hell. Now we're adding our 18th album that we've reviewed, and that is Great White, Once Bitten. Tom, do you have your rankings for the uh, album covers? I do. I do. So my album cover rankings so far are Blizzard of Oz at number one. Then I have Highway to Hell, Peace of Mind, Appetite, Pyromania, Mechanical Resident, Slide It In, Hailstorm, Odyssey, Jar Fly, Super Unknown, Singles, Bon Jovi, Winger, Load, OU812, Detonator. Great White, Once Bitten with the smoking hot Tracy Martinson. Uh, tough competition because the artwork on these up up top are just iconic. She's a smoke show, but I don't know. I'm a big fan of album artwork, so I'm going to give her the number six slot behind Pyromania. She's behind Pyromania at number six and right above Mechanical Residence by Tesla. And that's because wow. she's that's because she's a smoke show. And she is actually the first like well i mean we have the we have the the snakes and titties girl from slide it in and we have a kind of a robotic version of lizzie hale but she's actually the first woman that's on the cover of an album bon jovi's well yeah he's a woman <laughs> the chick oh you oh, you talk oh you talking about the chick on the cover okay gotcha yeah. Yeah, but she looks like she's like some, you know, Lola from the Copacabana Barry Manilow song on the cover of that album. But anyways, difficult one for me, but that's I'm going to put her there because she's so hot. Number six. All right. All right number. All right. Uh, All right. Booger. Uh, for me, I have Blizzard of Oz, Appetitty, Peace of Mind, Slide It In, Highway to Hell, Pyromania, Jar of Flies, Mechanical Resonance, Super Unknown, Singles, OU812, Bon Jovi, Hailstorm, Odyssey, Winger, Detonator and Load. That I don't think Load's gonna get beat ever. <laughs> um, I'm putting Once Bitten right under Jar Flies and above Mechanical Resonance. Um, it's not I Jar Flies is just unique and iconic for me. Yep. So is Pyromania, Highway to Hell, just the band and the and the subtleties of the horns and stuff. Mm-hmm. Above that, those horns. Our legendary covers slide in peace of mind, appetite, and blizzard. But this one, she's hot. Yep. And everything underneath it, nothing really sticks out. And I just wish that fucking shark fin was better. So yeah. I got once bitten at number eight for me. Okay. Sonny, Sonny what do you got, buddy? So my ranking so far, uh, I had peace of mind at number one. Then slide it in, Blizzard of Oz, Pyromania, Appetite for Destruction, Highway to Hell, Mechanical Resonance, Hailstorm, Bon Jovi, Detonator, Singles, Winger, Super Unknown, Jar of Flies, Odyssey, OU812, and Load. So this was going between, it's like, what's more important to me, the face or the snake and titties? The face (laughs) or the snake and titties? And snake and titties won. 
So So Once Bitten is going to be number three for me. Ooh, number three. Nice. Because I would much rather look at Tracy than Ozzy. So, oh, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's go to ranking of the actual albums. Fuck. Tom. Good luck, brother. Want to read what you have ranked? Oh, yeah. Oof. All right. Number one, Mechanical Residence. Two, Single Soundtrack, Pyromania, Highway to Hell, Jar of Flies, Appetite for Destruction, Odyssey, Hailstorm. Blizzard of Oz, Super Unknown, Load, Slide It In, Winger, Detonator, OU812, Bon Jovi, Peace of Mind. For me, the only th- the, all I need to know about this list is that I have Slide It In at number 13, and that's one of my all-time favorite albums. So that's what I'm dealing with here. It's just, I, we say this every episode, but I'm going to say it again. This is getting exceedingly impossible, and it's kind of like ranking songs where my like number one Tesla And my number six or seven album is just as spectacular. The one thing that this album is going to suffer from in terms of its rankings is because there's not a lot of nostalgia tied to it. My rankings right now are a combination of how much I love the album musically and what the album means to me. I love this album, but I'm really not attached to it. So the music is the only thing I have for this album. And because of that, I'm going to drop it to number seven, right behind Appetite for Destruction at number seven, above Odyssey and below Appetite for Destruction. So it's still high. It could have been higher, but it's it's going to be tough to knock out those top albums for me. Wow, that's pretty high, Tom. Think about how good your top 10 has to be. Right. right. Yep. Oh, yep. That's very good. Yep. All right. Would have been, it would have been higher, but I just I can't I can't bump it up though, over those other albums there. So. Love right. this album. Love it. So for me, I've had Blizzard of Oz, Pyromania, Appetite, Highway to Hell, Mechanical Resonance, Singles, Jar of Flies, Bon Jovi, Super Unknown, Slide It In. That's my top 10. And then you got mm-hmm. Detonator, Peace of Mind, Load, Hailstorm, Odyssey, OU812, Winger. I am putting this, and I really like this album. And the way I look at it is I am putting it, uh, you know, compared to albums that I didn't pick. I'm going to put this right underneath slide it in and above detonator, an album I did pick. Wow. Um, so this comes in at number 11 for me. Okay. Uh, nice. I, I mean, I love the album. It's just, you're right, Tom. I don't have much nostalgia for it. No, I can put this on and never think about skipping anything. It kicks ass. Um, yeah. It's just. It's just getting it's, tough to rank. Yeah. I yeah. can't even make my top 10. And I really love this album. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sonny, what do you got, buddy? All right. For me, my ranked albums right now. Number one is Hailstorm. Then I got Slided In, Appetite for Destruction, Mechanical Resonance, Pyromania, Winger, Peace of Mind, Bon Jovi, Highway to Hell, OU812, Blizzard, uh, Odyssey, Singles, Detonator, Super Unknown, Jar of Flies, and Load. So for me, I've lived with this album for a long time and it's desert Island. So it was easy for me. It was going to end up somewhere in the top five because I have four other desert Island albums on this and it ended up fifth. So it's going to be right behind. Nice. It'll be number five for me now. So it'll go hailstorm, slide it in appetite, mechanical resonance, and once bitten right before pyromania. So yes, Ooh. you can light up the email board. It is better than Highway to Hell and Pyromania in my mind. Yes, that I said that out loud. Go ahead and send your emails in. Yeah, you know what though? But that's like me. Like I have one spitting right above Odyssey. And like right now, I'm probably going like, well, why would I do that? And then I have, you know, I have like I said, I have slided in at 13. I love that album. It, it's just you're you're it's just really, really difficult. It just we say this every week, and it's gonna continue to get worse the more albums we do. The rankings are gonna get even tougher. I look at it as how many albums has have us have we picked that are above our own picks and group right. picks? Right. It's a good and point. Group picks. It's a good point. I mean, I have once bitten above detonator. Yeah. Um, I have, slide I have. it in technically was yours, Tom. So was yep. singles. So was mechanical resonance. Um, well, singles, singles was picks. your pick. Mechanical resonance was a group pick. Oh, so. sh- 
Dude, yeah. Am I, am I fucking insane? I'm, yes, I'm you are. To, I'm losing yes, my are. mind. Yes, you are. Um, yes. Yes. Um, and Sonny's pick was last winger. But anyway. Oh, nice. Wait, wait. I like that album. I know you do. Yeah. You have it. Number 14 for you. I like yeah. it. Wait till my next pick. My oh. own pick might be dead last. No. <laughs> That's a rousing. You just want to torture us. That's a way to get the bass fired up. Everybody tune in next month when Sonny picks a shitty album that he even thinks is shit. That he thinks is shitty. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. God damn. These reviews are becoming uh, uh, so difficult now. Yep. But it's so much fun. I love it. I love it. And our favorite part is when this episode ends. What do you got? What do you got, Sonny? What do you got? And then we can be like, oh, no, no, no. Really? What's your album? No, 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 stop joking with us, Sonny. What are you really picking? No, no, I'm, I'm really I'm, picking. I'm, I'm really hit. picking Tora Tora's third album. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm picking one that I'm going to have to b- send you both copies because oh, no. it's not available anywhere. Oh, don't, please don't, please don't. <laughs> please don't be serious. <laughs> well, please don't. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> now we go over to this part. Rock hard these days. Okay, so this is a TV show. It's an Amazon original. And my soon to be 17 year old son kind of turned me on to this and we were watching it together. It's a show called invincible. Um, it's characterized as an adult animated superhero TV show. Okay. It's based on a comic and it's actually written by Robert Kirkman. And if you're a big nerd, you would know that Robert Kirkman is the guy who created the walking dead series. So invincible is a story about a 17 year old boy whose father is a superhero named Omni man. And he become, you know, he's supposed to be like the most powerful man in the world. And then the son becomes a superhero of his own, but the big twist in this, and I don't want to spoil it is a big twist that kind of makes this like, Holy shit. I thought you thought this was going to be a fun superhero show. It is amazing. It's, it's, an, it's, it's rated M for mature for multiple reasons. They have a lot of like animated gore and violence. There's language. There's kind of sexual innuendos, et cetera, but it's well-written. You do not need to be like a superhero Marvel geek to enjoy it. It's well-written. It's the stories are, are interesting. The show actually just started in March. And I believe as of this recording, I think the first series, the first season just ended. My son and I are still catching up. So we haven't finished it. Um, but it's really, really great. Very, very cool TV show. Invincible on Amazon Prime. Is Omni Man the guy with the mustache? Yes, J.K. Simmons plays the voice. Yes. Okay. So yep. somebody sent me a message that yep. said my voice sounds like that guy. <laughs> that oh, they were wow. watching okay. Invincible. They go, oh, Poonie's Poonie's doing the voice track. I'm like, Poonie's dude, I don't on- even know what that show is. That's your new nickname. You're Omni Man now. <laughs> Very cool show. Again, you do not need to be a superhero kind of guy to get into it. That that's kind of the, the 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 main genesis of the show, but it's very very cool show. A lot of fun. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Yep. Is it still ongoing or is it over? I think I believe the series just concluded its first its first uh first season because it just started in okay. uh in March, I believe. Yeah, March 25th it premiered. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, for me, I have been watching and I haven't been able to stop watching uh, a show that's been on Netflix for quite some time. It's an original show. It's called, and I'm sure you've heard of it, The Crown. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's all about Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth right now. Um, it has four seasons and each season it moves along and it's all about really the effect of having wearing this crown the etiquette what it means all this stuff and it revolves around every episode has a historical thing that affects the crown and you hear about stuff that i didn't know anything about or in history that uh was so huge and then you start what is the first thing you do as soon as the episode ends i go on wikipedia and read all about it and then i get fascinated with the acting is phenomenal phenomenal so the the first two seasons have the same actors and then they've aged them up to the point where now season three and four now they're getting middle-aged and now you have like prince charles and his stuff but the first two seasons and how she becomes queen and the the story of her uncle who 
abdicated the throne and the difficulty in her father. Now, remember, they made that movie about the king's speech, the father yep. who had the speech impediment yep. and what it means. And they show her relationship with Prince Philip, who just passed away. So I don't know if you're aware of this, Tom, if you know the history in Sonny, that, you know, Prince Philip is Greek royalty. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he had to escape Greece and he had his stuff in his royal lineage is always had issues. In, there's no royal family anymore in Greece, but the people are still alive, but they're not recognized. So there's been so much trauma in the fact that she picks him because she loves him and their relationship and his style of parenting and how he is with Prince Charles is fucking awesome. I, I think the acting is incredible. The history, if you like history and you're a big history buff, it's fan fantastic. John Lithgow plays Winston <laughs> Churchill. Um, nice. The show is the the scenery, the 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 um, the background, the the filming, the 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 storylines is just incredible. Now, and my the thing I want to mention too is the act. I you know as I'm saying the act is phenomenal, but there is this actor. And his name is Pip Torrens that plays the character on this Tommy Lassley's. Alan Lassie's is real, but they call him Tommy in the show and stuff. It is so fucking brilliant. I I can't explain it. It's just he plays like that the British like private secretary of the of of the of the of the Queen and the previous kings and things like that. That he knows all the rules and all the etiquette. What you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, and he knows all their fucking shit. And he's like the cleanup man. And just the deathly stares he gives people and the way he just disarms people with this proper English and dresses down anybody that talks to him. Apparently not. When I hired you, I expected you to be like that. It's like, yep. yes, I am. Apparently not. And you're like, dude, this is so fucking creepy. And he just stares at the guy and you're like, what the fuck? Incredible acting. You guys take a look at it. If you like history, the uh, it, it's phenomenal. You get so into it. Uh, I, I've been a huge fan. They're doing uh, seasons five and six now, which is more modern. I'm curious to see how modern they'll get. Will, will they go up to Prince Harry shit and stuff now? But I've always been a big fan of the monarchy stuff. I find that stuff fascinating and interesting, and there's a lot of history there. So if that stuff does interest you, take a look. I will check that out because the only other person who I have heard rave about that show is my mom. And when my <laughs> mom, no, 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 no. And I don't mean that as an insult. I don't mean that as an insult. It sounded when, like it. <laughs> no, no, no. When my mom raves about a show, I'm like, ah, okay. But Zeus, if you, if you're raving about this show now, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give I, it a shot. <laughs> I can't stop watching it. It's so fast. There's so many little minor characters yeah. and history. And there's, there's one, which I never even knew. And it's almost like this almost could have been a whole, you know, HBO miniseries. I didn't know about this fucking mudslide that came from a coal mine that fell down. And I think it was in Wales. They like literally came down from this hill and just crushed this town. But especially of elementary school and buried them alive. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like a hundred kids wow. fucking like in like six to 10 years old got squashed Oof. and people were like, just then being like, you know, is the queen going to come and do something like there's a whole episode about yeah. that. And it's just like, Whoa, wow. you're like, and you're looking it up and you're like, Holy fuck, this really happened. And you see yeah. the pictures and stuff. It's just amazing stuff. Fascinating shit. I, I really? loved it. And I'm, I'm hooked. So Sonny, Sonny. we got, all right. So for me, um, as I have shared before, and by my appearance, you can tell I'm a lazy guy. So every once in a while, I'll grab the Xfinity remote and say a name, right? So the other day I say Halle Berry. Well, why? Mm. Because uh, you're dirty. she's H-A-F. <laughs> on this side of the world, that's considered hot as fuck. Sounds like on the East Coast, you guys say smoke show. Smoke Never show. heard smoke show. But okay. uh, anyway, so I say Halle Berry into the remote. Up comes 1991's Last Boy Scout. You remember oh, that movie, yes. The Last Boy Scout? Yes. Horrible movie. Yes, that when the God, fucking football on. player yep. shoots yeah. somebody in the middle of a game. Yep. <laughs> so I really like the movie because I'm a football fan. I love cop buddy movies. I like that there's a good 
balance of fun and action in movies. I love the anti-hero. I'm a Bruce Willis fan. I'm a Damon Wayans fan. Of course, I'm a big Halle Berry fan. So it kind of hit, checked a lot of boxes for me. So I enjoy the movie. Uh, Bruce Willis plays uh, this burnout Secret Service agent, the now uh, private investigator. Damon Wayans plays a burnout hooked on drugs quarterback. Chelsea Field plays Bruce's wife, who's unhappy cheating on him with his best friend. Halle Berry plays Damon's girlfriend. She's a stripper slash dancer. And then Noble Willingham plays a bad guy team owner. So the movie didn't exactly kill it at the box office. But I, I think it's worth the watch. Now, I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody, so hit 10 second skip right now. Halle Berry dies early in the movie and that kind of sucks. <laughs> so I watch, you know, I turn the movie on cause I want to see Halle Berry and I'm like, Oh fuck. I forgot she dies early. Yep. The Xfinity remote ain't going to tell you that, <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed the movie. I've always liked it. I remember that movie. It's a, it's just, it's a fun kind of popcorn movie, but it's funny Zeus. Cause whenever anybody brings up the last push, like, Oh, that's the movie where the guy pulls a gun out of his uniform and shoots the guy <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the field. That's the only thing people know <laughs> about that movie. Goes up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing people know about oh, that movie. Man. Cause it's such these an rep, iconic scene. These reps are calling it tight. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Funny shit. Yep. Oh, uh, great. So guys, Sonny, where can we hear you, brother? Uh, growinguprock.com. It's probably the easiest way to get Growing Up Rock and um, everywhere. Uh, Podcast Rock City. We do a Kiss podcast every Sunday live. So uh, check me out there. Cool. And yeah, so Zeus and I, we are Shout It Out Loudcast. We are a weekly Kiss podcast with new episodes that drop every Saturday. Uh, once a month, we do this album review crew with uh, Mr. Sonny Pooney. So if you're hearing us for the first time, uh, Shout Out Loudcast is a weekly KISS podcast. Uh, you can email us at shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. We're on all the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So you can reach out to us there, email, DM, you know, tag us in comments, whatever. Uh, we're part of the fantastic Pantheon podcast network of shows. Tons of great shows there. Um, and, uh, our album review crew logo, as well as our shout out loudcast logo was created by our good buddy, Ed from click T shop, click with a K Sonny's wearing one of those right now. Obviously you can't see this cause it's audio only. Uh, but he created a special logo for these, this album review crew with a really cool retro looking logo on the front and the shout out loudcast logo on the back. Very cool stuff. So check out Ed at click T shop.com click with a K. Yeah, for the album review crew, we always love the emails. They're always great. They always give a lot of detail, and we always appreciate those. So don't forget the email. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at uh, gmail.com. Don't forget to DM us if you have anything you want to ask us. You can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, We are on the uh, Pantheon Podcast Network, as Tom mentioned. And we also have a Patreon account, P A T R E O N uh, dot com. You can find it or the Patreon app. And uh, also in the episode notes, where if you want to look at the episode where you get your podcast, you can look at the notes there. We have our email link, Facebook group links, uh, our Patreon account link. If that's something that interests you, take a look, see if that uh, is something that you want to get involved with. Uh, other than that, uh, Tom, any famous last words? Oh, of course. Ooh, loving ain't no crime. Oh, no. I see your man ain't here. He don't care. The way of the night has gone and we'll move on. Got to find a way to face another day. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um, Sonny, just hanging around, getting slow and older, like a little girl sucking chemical cola strung out on the lies, the lies that the TV sold her. I'm so glad we brought up that. What the (laughs) fuck is sipping chemical cola? Is is that like booze or like, I I think it's any, did he just rhyme something (laughs) sipping chemical cola settle down, Jack? Yeah, that's a little rough. (laughs) Speaking of rough. 
woke up a little too rough looking like a quarter when a dollar ain't enough. That's a great lyric. This room is just a mess. Nothing's ever working and I couldn't care less. And I ain't got no money. Ooh. <laughs> I ain't got no honey because I ain't got no money. Your rhymes will be so corny. <laughs> oh boy. Tom, thank you. Sonny, thank you. Loudcasters out there, thank you. Sonny, thank you, buddy. As always, great fun. Zeus, thank you. Everybody out there, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Can't wait to hear some feedback on Great White. Yeah, always good hanging out. And uh, just one last thing on Great White. If you love the Once Bitten album, Jack Russell's Great White released a Once Bitten Acoustic Bites in 2020 on Deadline Music. It has the nine songs in order with a bonus Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You cover acoustically. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that little public service announcement. Perfect. Awesome. Peace out, Girl Scout.